Blue Phoenix. Prologue. Wei Yu closed his eyes and turned his face towards the window. The slightly chilled breeze flowed gently through his messy hair. Summer was coming to an end, and a tranquil smile was evident on his handsome face as he opened his eyes and looked at his surroundings. Happiness was the only word which could describe Wei Yu's current feelings. Wei Yu noticed two girls who were intently staring at him while they whispered to each other. A cheeky smile appeared on his face as he enjoyed the cuteness of the two girls, and he could not help but wave to them. This instantly caused them to giggle and wave back. Their cheeks turned crimson. They acted as if he was some kind of celebrity, making the young man chuckle slightly with happiness. Wei Yu, remembering where he was, gave an apologetic smile to the two girls still openly staring at him. He usually would not mind flirting with the two of them but, he knew that classes were about to end, and he could not help but smile. His smile melted the hearts of the girls, and their faces flushed an even deeper crimson than before as they quickly went on their way. It was obvious they were trying to escape from their embarrassment. Wei Yu was used to behavior like this. He had grown up in a wealthy family, and both of his parents were beautiful people who passed down their genes to their only son. Wei Yu had eyes as dark as the moonless midnight sky, they seemed to contain as many secrets as the universe itself. Girls would feel as if their souls were exposed to him, and they were attracted to this mysterious feeling. Those shimmering dark eyes were hidden beneath his slightly messy bangs. Wei Yu's hair was shoulder length, and he usually tied it up while leaving his bangs hanging, this gave him a slightly mischievous, youthful look. His black hair and dark eyes were in sharp contrast to his pearl white skin and perfect physique. In fact, most men would admit that Wei Yu was a handsome man. Which was the reason most people who saw him instantly took a second glance at him to ensure they had not seen an illusion. His appearance caused both admiration and envy amongst his peers. Wei Yu was grateful to his parents for his good looks but more than that he appreciated all the resources and possibilities he was given because of them. From a very young age, he could have anything he wished for whether it was games, toys, books, or home tutors. These resources helped Wei Yu achieve his current level of knowledge and understanding. All in all, Wei Yu was very satisfied with his life, and he had every reason to be with his good looks and education. He stood up and gathered his things before leaving the university for the day. Everyone he met in the corridors greeted him, professors and students alike. Happy for the recognition, Wei Yu smiled back at all of them. Suddenly he heard footsteps approaching him from behind quickly. Clearly, someone was running, however, before Wei Yu had the chance to turn around two hands landed on his shoulders. The culprit jumped onto his back forcing Wei Yu to give them a piggyback ride. Nevertheless, Hu Yui was not surprised. Rather, the familiar feeling of two small hands on his shoulders caused Wei Yu to smile contentedly. He turned his head and looked straight at his childhood friend Li Fen. Seeing Li Fen always aroused a storm within Wei Yu as his feelings for her were doing their very best to burst out. Nevertheless, no matter how fierce those feelings were and how much they raged inside of him, Wei Yu forcefully subdued them. He behaved as if his stormy passion did not exist. Li Fen was the only person that Wei Yu treated differently. She was his special person, though, only he knew it. Hey, Wei Yu said with a voice filled with joy. This joy was always bubbling within Wei Yu's chest whenever he saw Li Fen, and when he was able to spend some of his time with her. It was a bubbly feeling which he experienced for the first time more than 10 years ago before this day. They had grown up together as neighbors, gone to the same daycare and kindergarten. Throughout their years together, they had been the best of friends who shared everything with each other. Well, almost everything. Wei Yu had loved Li Fen for as long as he could remember, but he had never been able to tell her how he felt. He was very well aware that she did not share his feelings. Wei Yu had no doubt that Li Fen loved him. Unfortunately, her love for him was probably equal to that of a family member, and although it had caused him great pain in the past, it was something which he had overcome. Currently, Li Fen was the happiest Wei Yu had ever seen her. He had no wish to destroy her world by confessing his feelings. Instead, he accepted that his love would stay unrequited forever. Will you be training today? Li Fen asked with a soft voice. She had a relaxed smile on her face making it shine as beautifully as the sun. This caused the bubbling feelings within Wei Yu to increase. No, not today. Wei Yu said gently. He decided to change his focus to the girls who had been watching him with dreamy eyes, imagining they were Li Fen. 
Those looks always made way you think of the irony. These girls wished to be the girl by his side, yet the one woman he wanted did not want him. Wei Yu practiced with Shu. He enjoyed barehanded combat and loved working with short range and long range weapons. He enjoyed how training would allow him to focus solely on building up his body and on progressing, and also how it let him take his mind off of the one woman with whom he wished to spend his life with but could not have. Initially, he just sought a way to take his mind off of Li Fen, but gradually he found the feeling of improving his physique step by step immensely satisfying. This caused his typical day to consist of training, studying, and spending time together with Li Fen, going to meet up with Han Sha. Li Fen asked with a cheeky grin on her face, which caused Wei Yu to sigh deeply. While Wei Yu was busy reminiscing about his emotional struggles all Li Fen worried about was Wei Yu's girlfriend. No. He said while shaking his head, she broke up with me a few days ago. Li Fen looked at Wei Yu's face and couldn't hold back a small giggle as the man in question didn't look the slightest bit sorry. Even after countless girlfriends, Li Fen showed no signs of having noticed Wei Yu's feelings. The usual. Li Fen asked carelessly with laughter in her voice. She was casually looking at Wei Yu, who nodded. They say that there is no point being with me if I am always busy training or studying and that I don't take care of them. Wei Yu repeated what his previous girlfriends had said to him so many times before that he now knew it all by heart. Li Fen laughed once again as he did not sound sorry at all. Both knew that he had a lot of girls to choose from after all. The only girl that Wei Yu truly liked was Li Fen, however, if he was not dating anyone and a cute girl confessed to him, he would not hesitate to accept. He was a young man after all and living a life of abstinence was not something he was keen on. Well then, Li Fen said while her smile widened into a grin and she grabbed Wei Yu's hand. Come shopping with me before we go back home. She said while moving towards the city's center before giving Wei Yu the time to answer as she knew he would never say no to anything she asked. He could only laugh helplessly and obediently follow her. Although Wei Yu might place his girlfriend second too. Training and studying, Li Fen was in a different league from everything else. He would gladly study less if it meant spending more time with the love of his life. Wei Yu stood outside a lingerie shop and felt quite uncomfortable as people walked by. Li Fen dragged him here for her first stop in her shopping spree. But as Wei Yu was a man, it was quite inappropriate for him to enter a shop that specialized in female lingerie. It would embarrass other customers that were present along with himself. Wei Yu sighed and leaned against the wall while quickly killing the jealousy he felt roaring inside of him. He did not mind going shopping with Li Fen, and he would have been quite excited if what she was currently buying was something she would wear while being with him. However, it was obviously to celebrate the anniversary with her current boyfriend and that put Wei Yu in quite a bad mood. The young man decided to preoccupy himself, rather than allow himself to drown in self-pity so he started to observe the surrounding area for anything that might grab his attention. As he looked across the street, he noticed an extensive amount of glances that were being thrown his way, though he couldn't blame them. He was standing outside a lingerie shop with a rather uncomfortable expression on his face after all. However, as his eyes swept over the area, he noticed an antique store across the road that piqued his interest. His uncomfortable expression instantly vanished as his face lit up. He couldn't help furrow his brows as he slowly started making his way towards the store that he had never noticed before. Wei Yu was currently working on his masters in ancient history, and he adored anything that had something to do with the subject. He had studied everything from war and tactics to cooking recipes and architecture from most well-known nations throughout history. Studying these subjects had brought him great joy since his childhood. Even now it was one of the things that was the most enjoyable to him. Wei Yu was confident that he had already visited every antique shop in town, but somehow it seems he had missed this one, he wanted to correct that. Who knows, he might even be able to find something of interest so he was fairly excited when he opened the door to the shop and felt the stale air inside. An elderly lady was sitting behind the counter reading an old book. She sent a long look towards the young man who had just stepped through the door. However, this elderly woman quickly determined that the handsome youth didn't seem to be a troublemaker, so she returned to reading her book. As Wei Yu's eyes swiftly adjusted to the dim lighting that illuminated the shop, his gaze swept past the elderly woman and focused on row after row of intriguing items. Even at first glance Wei Yu felt excitement growing within him, 
It was as if he was treasure hunting and uncovered a treasure chest full of priceless gems. The first shelf way you arrived at was completely filled with vases that ranged in age from as young as 500 years to as old as 3000 years. Wei Yu was dumbfounded at the manner in which these incredible treasures were displayed. At first, the young man was sure that these vases were fakes and disdain was evident in his eyes. But something kept bothering him, and after spending some time examining the details, he was pretty sure that they were genuine. Shock quickly replaced his disdain, and Wei Yu felt his heartbeat grow erratic. This also caused his breathing to become slightly irregular. If these vases were really genuine, then what about the rest of the items? Although Wei Yu adored vases, he had no actual use for them so he slowly moved further into the shop eager to see what he would find next. As he made his way through the shop, he noticed one treasure after another. The whole shelf was filled with ancient paintings that had been rolled up and stored one on top of another stacked up three layers. Wei Yu felt deeply depressed when he noticed many old texts lying amongst those valuable paintings treated as though they were nothing, even though their value could very well be priceless. Although the shop looked dodgy and was quite dusty, it was without a doubt a treasure trove. Wei Yu moved deeper into the shop, and each step caused his heartbeat to speed up. Due to this, he felt lightheaded for a moment. The next sight he came across was a stack of armor and weapons which had been dumped on top of each other in a corner. Wei Yu spent a lot of time looking through the weapons and noticed that some of them bore the marks of master craftsmen, and no doubt had been used by the nobility and generals of ages long past. After staying in the shop for so long, Wei Yu had completely forgotten about Li Fen. He was immersed in his interest of the ancient times, of great heroes and wars. Although Wei Yu knew he was in a shop, it was very much like he was visiting a museum except here he was allowed actually to touch and examine the treasures. Looking around, Wei Yu was certain that this shop contained, even more, treasures than the actual museums he had visited before. Wei Yu walked past clothing, emblems, and books to reach the counter where he saw jewelry spread out. The moment he arrived he saw something which caused him to freeze and take a deep breath to mentally steady himself. In front of him was the most beautiful phoenix crown he had ever seen, an astonishing Fangguan. It was far more exquisite than the one that had been found in the tomb of the Wanli Emperor, and Wei Yu had never even heard of such a treasure being found before. This shop was filled with surprises. The crown was on display in the middle of the counter, and it was, without a doubt, the most stunning head ornament he had seen in the shop so far. The crown was, oddly enough, not locked down or guarded with anything. It just sat there allowing customers to examine it through a mere glass cabinet. After staring at it for a while, Wei Yu withdrew his gaze from this stunning piece to look at the counter for other intriguing items. A large grin spread across his face as his eyes fell on a box in a corner that had a sign which read, Anything in this box is 600 yen. Wei Yu noticed a blue gem that was extraordinarily similar to the one he had seen on the phoenix crown. He immediately went to the box and removed this beautiful item. It was a hairpin that was unlike anything Wei Yu had ever seen before. It was a blue phoenix pin, and it had a body formed into an oval from an incredibly pure piece of white jade which was framed with golden swirls. Its wings were made from sapphires. Jade, gold, and sapphire swirled around each other creating elaborate patterns, beautiful tail feathers, and a long delicate neck towards a beautiful beacon face. Multiple pearls lined the face of the phoenix near the wing completing the look. Oh, you like the blue phoenix. An old voice sounded from the corner. Wei Yu was startled as he had completely forgotten about the elderly lady, but he quickly looked at her with a respectful gaze and noticed a complex expression on her face. Wei Yu gave a short nod to answer her question before once again looking at the beautiful hairpin. It had to be an exquisite antique, and he had no way of understanding why it would have been tossed into this cheap box. A worrying premonition appeared in his heart as he felt that he liked the hairpin more and more with each passing moment, was it placed in the wrong box? Wei Yu asked, the worry in, his voice was evident as he pointed to the sign that read, anything in this box is 600 yen. He could understand that she might feel cheated to taking such a low price for this masterpiece. This being the case, no matter the price, Wei Yu felt that he needed to own this particular piece of jewelry. No, the price is right, the elderly lady said hesitantly. Wei Yu frowned upon hearing the old woman's reply but said no more as he waited for an explanation. He was certain that it was from either the Tang or Ming dynasty, and most likely from the same place as the beautiful phoenix crown. 
How could it possibly be sold for such a low price? For some reason, Wei Yu felt insulted that this crown was so cheap. Insulted as if it was himself that was being considered cheap. It is cursed, the old lady finally said with a sigh. She noticed how obsessed this young man had become after holding the hairpin, even though he only had it for such a short time. Death will descend upon the owner of this hairpin. Wei Yu was about to snort in disbelief, but his upbringing, however, had taught him to never show arrogance in front of others, and he managed to restrain himself. He understood that people would be superstitious when there was a lack of knowledge, although in this day and age something like a curse could not scare him. Especially not since this beautiful hairpin felt as though it was a part of himself, he could already not bear to part with it. Young men do not make fun of curses. They are more real than you might imagine, the elderly lady warned as she stood up and walked towards Wei Yu and the Blue Phoenix hairpin. Although Wei Yu had tried to contain his contempt, the lady easily understood his thoughts, she wished for this man to survive. She did not wish for him to become another target for the Blue Phoenix. It arrived in my shop 300 years ago, the lady started as she took the hairpin from Wei Yu's hands and moved behind the counter. We sold it almost immediately then the owner died three days later having been assaulted by thieves. Wei Yu kept quiet as he did not believe that thieves could be blamed on the hairpin unless they specifically aimed to steal it. The thieves were then killed by relatives of the buyer, and so the hairpin went to his oldest son, however, he died from a lightning strike. Wei Yu crooked his brows slightly. It was very unlikely for anyone to die from a lightning strike unless they intentionally sought out a location where lightning would hit them. He chose not to believe the story so far as it was more than a hundred years ago, and the story had to have been exaggerated. After that, the old lady continued as she noticed that Wei Yu had doubt in his eyes. It went from one person to another, and every one of those people died. Eventually, the last owner delivered it back here. We have sold it a few times since then, however, the results have always been the same. The elderly lady sighed in hope that Wei Yu would give up. She did not mind selling the cursed hairpin to wicked people, but after she saw the genuine excitement and admiration he had while looking at the treasures in her store, she wished for him to live a long and prosperous life. Wei Yu felt her hesitation, and he sent a genuine smile towards the elderly woman. He took the hairpin back into his hands at once while politely saying, I wish to purchase this hairpin, and I will just have to hope that my luck is stronger than the curse. His smile left no space for discussion causing the elderly lady to sigh once again as she accepted his money. After all, she had never personally experienced anyone being affected by the curse, so maybe this youth was right, perhaps the curse was just a superstition. Wei Yu's mood did not have any trace of his previous jealousy, instead, he was ecstatic as he left the antique shop. He knew that no one would use such a hairpin in this day and age, however, it was incredibly beautiful, and he could think of only one person who could match its beauty. He could not wait to gift it to Li Fen and see her happy expression just thinking about it made him show a silly smile, Wei Yu. A brilliant voice called out to him the moment he stepped back onto the pavement. He noticed that Li Fen had finished her shopping, and she had been waiting for him outside of the lingerie store. As she saw Wei Yu leave the antique shop with something in his hand, Li Fen was overtaken by excitement. She wanted to show Wei Yu what she had purchased as well as see what he had found so without thinking she stepped onto the busy road. Wei Yu scratched his head slightly as he realized that he had most likely spent more time than expected within the shop, but coming out he felt as though it had been worth it. Li Fen's happy smile was quickly replaced by an expression of shock when she heard a loud honking. When she instantly looked to the side, she saw a truck heading straight towards her. The driver was doing everything he could to avoid a collision, but Li Fen was like a deer in headlights, frozen by fear and disbelief. Her body refused to move. The silly smile and happiness which had been bubbling within Wei Yu instantly vanished. Seeing Li Fen frozen in the truck only a few meters away, Wei Yu's body swiftly moved on its own. Wei Yu's heart was filled with the fear that he might not make it in time. Images from their 24 years of friendship passed in front of him enhancing his feelings for her. Wei Yu jumped onto the road and arrived next to Li Fen within a second, and his horrified expression scared Li Fen, but as they were close to each other, the fear quickly subsided from Wei Yu's face. All this happened within seconds, and it was only possible for Wei Yu to react swiftly and succeed in his rescue due to the truck having hit the brakes so hard that the entire area was filled with screeching sounds. 
He borrowed the power he had gained with his speed and quickly pushed the girl as far back as he could. Li Fen ended up flying two meters back and landed safely on the pavement before she realized what had happened. Although he pushed her quite hard and she was bound to get some bruises, she would be alive. A relieved smile appeared on Wei Yu's face just before the truck hit him and sent him flying over 10 meters causing him to bounce off the ground a few times. Wei Yu expected himself to be struck by fear and horror, but the moment he was hit, he felt no fear, only relief that Li Fen was safe. Wei Yu attempted to protect himself and raised his arms before the initial impact, but his eyes widened as he noticed that he was still tightly grasping the blue phoenix hairpin. Only now it was shining with an odd, almost mystical, blue light. As soon as the truck hit him, the impact against his arms caused the hairpin to penetrate his skin going between his ribs to pierce his heart. Wei Yu felt as if time stood still, then shock filled his eyes as he had a sudden whimsical thought. Would he die because of the truck or was it because of the hairpin? Suddenly, while looking at the hairpin, he noticed that it disappeared and turned into blue flames that gathered just outside of his chest. Wei Yu was shocked when he noticed he could sense everything that was happening to him, and it all appeared to happen in slow motion. Fortunately, either the impact from the truck or the stabbing hairpin must have killed him instantly because he felt no pain from his injuries that he was observing. Wei Yu diverted his attention from his wounds to the unusual fireball which was currently hovering above his heart, and a shocking sight met him. Not only was the fireball hovering above his heart, but it had also begun to absorb his blood. Wei Yu was completely unable to comprehend what was happening to him. A chill ran through his already dead body while his mind filled with fear from this unknown phenomenon which was occurring to him. Shortly after, he felt his consciousness move from his beaten body into the ball of blue fire that was rapidly growing. This caused panic to spread throughout Wei Yu's mind. A futile struggle began, and in spite of how hard Wei Yu tried, it was impossible for him to resist the suction force coming from the fireball. As Wei Yu entered the fireball he was able to look down at his old body and notice how people were rushing towards him, however, due to the powerful impact, there wasn't any sign of life. Wei Yu was completely broken, and anyone would have a hard time recognizing his body. Wei Yu himself was fully aware that his soul had departed his body, but he still felt an urge to linger around longer. He did not feel as if he was ready to depart yet. Wei Yu had a deep lingering regret whenever he thought about how he would never see Li Fen again. To know that her smile would be lost to him forever. At least she was with him during his dying moments. Profound sadness appeared in his heart as the image of his parents flashed before him. He could not help but be saddened when he thought of his parents who had given him everything he could ever wish for, however, now, as he was dead, he wouldn't even have the chance to say goodbye. Wei Yu looked at Li Fen, who was crying while touching his bloody corpse trying to convince herself that he was still alive, that there was still a possibility of saving him. This caused a wave of sadness to flood Wei Yu's heart. He had never wanted to make Li Fen feel this pain, and he knew that his parents were going to be as heartbroken as she was, but, even so, he was certain he made the right choice. Wei Yu was not selfless, nor was he a charitable person, however, there were three people in this world that Wei Yu would give his life to save. Li Fen happened to be one of those people, so Wei Yu had no regrets. To save the woman he loved by sacrificing his own life was the right choice, but death was still a frightening thing. Live well, Wei Yu whispered towards the crying Li Fen before he attempted to mentally brace himself for his soul to perish as he knew it should. However, instead of death, Wei Yu heard a mocking voice from within the blue fire which said, What a sappy love story. Chapter 1. Rebirth. Wei Yu had been floating in a sea of blue flames for what seemed like an eternity. At first, he was panic-stricken, but the endless sea of blue flames swayed his mind quickly washing away the depressing thoughts that still lingered within Wei Yu. Currently, Wei Yu found himself engulfed in a comfortable way he had never been before. His body was light, and it floated around in the sea. He was completely without worries as he casually moved around observing the flickering blue embers which the sea was made of. He was well aware that he had died. Though the blue sea was doing everything it could to wash away his sorrows, there was still a feeling of loss which could not be filled. Whenever Wei Yu thought about this, he remembered the face of Li Fen. He remembered their childhood together, and the first time he realized he loved her. He then remembered the smiles she would give him and the happiness they brought him. Although Wei Yu kept thinking about his life with Li Fen, 
He also knew that there was no way he could ever return to his previous life. Death, however, did not seem as terrible as he expected. There was no darkness, no monsters nor a long path of light leading towards stairs. There was nothing apart from this endless warm blue sea. These blue flames were so calming that he soon stopped thinking about his memories of leaving behind Li Fen and his parents. His worries subsided into an unexplainable feeling that everything would be okay. Suddenly, Wei Yu was startled as he heard a faint mumbling. A mumble that came from far away. His soul became alert, and he strained his ears trying to pick up what was being said. Unfortunately, everything he heard was muffled, and no matter how hard he tried, he was still unable to understand what the voice was saying. For a long time, Wei Yu was as tense as a bowstring, fear and panic threatened to overtake him, however, even if he wished to move away, it was currently impossible. His consciousness was completely trapped within the blue sea of flames. Wei Yu focused his attention towards the sounds, but it took some time before he noticed how the previously still blue flames started to flare up towards the blue sky. The change in the sea caused the already alert Wei Yu to finally force himself to calm down and observe everything happening around him. While the flames grew larger, the sea grew smaller, and a suction force started pulling Wei Yu towards a dark blue abyss. As this suction force appeared, Wei Yu noticed that the murmur he had heard previously originated within this abyss, and he was heading straight for it. Wei Yu felt his consciousness flicker slightly. His consciousness rushed down a dark blue tunnel falling towards an unknown location. His initial fear had long since passed because these events felt as if they took years to complete. Every stage, every meter traveled was clearly visible to the alert Wei Yu. When Wei Yu noticed that he was rushing through a dark tunnel, falling towards an unknown location, his speed suddenly picked up. It changed from a few meters each year, to a few meters each day, and eventually, he could feel himself falling at a high speed near the end. A hint of fear snuck back into his heart as he was unaware of what his future would bring. He had no idea how this blue sea and the black tunnel were capable of controlling time or at least his sense of time. However, he forcefully calmed himself down with the thought that he had already died and with no body, he should no longer be able to feel pain. Wei Yu focused on suppressing his fears so that it would not cloud his mind. He attentively observed everything which was happening around him. Soon he had stopped moving, but it was not an abrupt stop rather. His speed slowed down before it almost unknowingly disappeared. Wei Yu noticed subtle changes in his surroundings, but currently, he was still unable to understand what was going on. His senses were alert, just as before, however, nothing seemed to be happening. A moment of complete silence followed Wei Yu's arrival, at wherever he was. Nevertheless, after that moment, he heard the previous voices which were mumbling. The voices now were no longer low mumbles, but hurried voices seemingly yelling right next to him. The darkness changed from a black tunnel into a lighter shade, a shade Wei Yu was all too familiar with. Wei Yu needed a moment to understand what was happening around him. Once he relatively understood his situation he noticed that he was no longer just a consciousness but once again contained within a body. Shock filled his heart and increased its beat. The darkness which surrounded him he finally noticed was from having his eyes closed, and opening them was not an easy task. Wei Yu was rigid with fear and curiosity. He had been dead, of that he was sure, but now he suddenly found himself in another body. It was impossible for him to move in this body though, and even opening his eyes seemed to be a cumbersome task, however, even if he had to live his life as a vegetable, it would be worth it, as long as he could see Li Fen and his parents once more. His fear melted away as he thought about Li Fen and the terrified expression on her face. His gratitude for the heavens spread within him as he knew that they might be reunited. Maybe he could even get this body to move. Wei Yu decided to try moving his limbs, testing whether they were still attached to him, and relief flooded him as he noticed that they somewhat followed his orders. However, although they followed his orders, he could not help but feel that something was amiss. Wei Yu's entire body felt very different from what he was used to before the crash, but he decided that details like this could be focused on later. The most important issue for Wei Yu was to once again see Li Fen's beautiful smile. The fact that he could control a body left him feeling relieved, and he focused all his energy to force his tired, sealed eyes open. As soon as his eyes opened, he instantly screamed. His heart felt as if it had tried to escape his chest and fear shone in his eyes. The next thing he knew the face of a giant was in front of him. 
It was a rough-looking man with a bearded face so close that Wei Yu was certain that he would reach it if he stretched out his arm. After containing the scream, Wei Yu dared not make another sound let alone move a muscle. The fear in his eyes was apparent to this giant as well, but he seemed not to care. Wei Yu was shocked deeply by these events. Wei Yu's first thought was to escape instantly and find a safe place where he could focus on understanding this changed reality he seemed to be in. However, right now, there was no way to escape with this giant staring at him. At least this giant did not seem hostile in any way, however, it still seemed to be a dangerous situation to be caught in right after waking up in a new body, being completely unguarded. Wei Yu was scared. He had expected to see Li Fen and his complete mindset had been positive, but everything was now thrown into chaos and he feared for his future. He feared for his new questionable life. Don't be so close, you're scaring him, dear, an exhausted but gentle voice sounded from the side, and Wei Yu slowly turned his head to look in the direction of the voice. It was hard to move his head or even keep his eyes open, but he forced them to do so as he currently had no choice but stay alert. To stay on guard and to understand what was happening around him. As Wei Yu moved his head, he noticed that he was currently located in a worn out bedroom in a rundown shack. Looking at the shack, Wei Yu furrowed his brows and wondered if he had traveled back in time. The interior resembled a wooden shack that commoners would have owned back in ancient China. Something about the air here was much richer than what he was used to, but most importantly, giants definitely did not exist, and Wei Yu suddenly understood that he was in another world. The bed in the bedroom was currently occupied by a woman who was clearly beautiful, but right now her beautiful features were filled with exhaustion and pain. The lower part of the bed was covered with blood, and a young girl was washing the injured woman. Wei Yu was both scared and confused as his eyes widened while he stared at the bed. The entire situation was something which he completely did not understand. These giants did not seem hostile as what Wei Yu thought while observing the two adults. He continued to contemplate for a while but decided that the easiest way to gain information would be to simply ask them. Although he had decided to seek help from the friendly giants, it still took a few breaths for him to stabilize himself and calm his soul before he finally opened his mouth. Goo goo, ga. Ufa. Wei Yu tried to say something along the lines of, Excuse me, could you explain what is going on here? However, the words that came out of his mouth made no sense. Wei Yu's eyes widened as he got quiet and had a strange and rather uncomfortable premonition. Listen, darling, the bearded giant said as he reached down and carried Wei Yu towards the fatigued woman. Our son is already trying to speak. There was tenderness in his voice, and the same tenderness was shown on the woman's face. The tenderness and care that these two people showed Wei Yu made his heart ache as he was reminded of his parents and the pain he left behind with his premature death, not to mention his own suffering. Seeing these two adults made him long for his parents. It made him miss how they would talk with him randomly, or lovingly scold him when he broke things. He also missed Li Fen, the woman whom he had given his life to save, and the woman who meant the world to him. He had hoped to be reunited with her, but now he realized that it was highly unlikely to ever happen, he would probably never see her again. This realization caused a lump to form in Wei Yu's throat, and he fought back to avoid crying. Lying on his new mother's bosom, Wei Yu forced himself to ignore the pain and sadness he felt from the loss of his parents and Li Fen. Instead, he started thinking about everything that had happened to him. He should have believed the old lady when she said that the hairpin was cursed. It truly did seem to have killed him, however, as he was thinking about his situation he said in his mind, I wish I knew how I went from death to rebirth. Obviously, it was caused by my astonishing power, a self-satisfied voice spoke from somewhere inside of Wei Yu's mind causing the already frightened young man to become even more frightened. The voice seemed faintly familiar. Who are you? Wei Yu asked tentatively while trying to remember where he had heard this voice before, however, as soon as he had that thought, he remembered. It was the voice he had heard as he was dying. Wei Yu instantly became alert and did not allow for even the slightest muscle in his new body to relax. He knew that he was in a very dangerous situation. He had the body of an infant, and he seemed unable to fight back in his current state. Is he a death reaper? Wei Yu questioned himself while refusing to say anything else. But as he kept his silence, it seemed as if it did not matter. Much as the voice gave a healthy laugh. Ha ha, you're not bad kid. The voice exclaimed happily as if it were praising a dog, 
I am the legendary Blue Phoenix, and I was sealed within that cursed hairpin which you bought. You. You're the one who killed me. Hostility flared up in Wei Yu's mind as he roared at the hidden voice. This voice belonged to the person who took Li Fen away from him. This Blue Phoenix was the one who had taken away his hopes for a future and taken away his parents' only child. This self-proclaimed Phoenix made Wei Yu seed with rage. Nah, I did not cause the truck to appear. I just used the opportunity to merge with you, the voice sounded bored as it spoke. It seemed as if he did not even care about Wei Yu's death, which in turn only nurtured the younger man's rage. You should thank me you know. The voice said as if it was capable of sensing the hostility which was aimed towards him, nonetheless, the voice still contained obvious disdain. If I hadn't merged with you, you would not have been able to reincarnate this quickly. Once again the voice turned smug as it pointed out just how much way you owed him. I doubt he is lying, way you thought annoyed. It seems as if this person does not care about me at all, so why would he bother to lie about such a thing? After contemplating for a short while, Wei Yu decided to believe the arrogant voice in his mind. In the end, he had no real choice if he wished to get information. What do you mean when you say that you caused me to reincarnate? Where am I? As soon as Wei Yu asked these questions, he heard a sigh from the phoenix, and somehow he understood the feelings the phoenix felt. He felt a certain degree of impatience, and annoyance but also hope. Wei Yu felt astonished as he realized that he was currently able to understand the feelings of the voice inside of his mind. He was deeply astounded, but at the same time unsure why the phoenix would allow him to feel this. I will tell you a long story, the phoenix said after a pause. I have nothing but time, I'm a baby you know. He thought while noticing that his new mother had fallen asleep. Wei Yu pretended to be asleep as well so that he would not be disturbed while talking with the voice in his mind. Had Wei Yu not been moved to a different world, he would have been certain that he was going insane. Be quiet and listen to my story. The phoenix said just as the silence was getting suffocating, and his actions made way you think of a child throwing a tantrum. It is really quite a long story, and you better listen because I will only say it once. The phoenix said aggressively, but way you just stayed quiet, waiting for the bird to start his story. He had a feeling that the phoenix was able to understand everything about him, his thoughts, his emotions, everything. Even if they did not directly communicate, he felt that the bird understood him. Unfortunately, it seemed this did not work both ways. Hmm, the phoenix grumbled a little before he decided how to start. This world is quite different from the one you are used to. Here strength is what matters the most. The stronger you are, the better prospects you have in life. The phoenix was quiet for a second before continuing. This world was created by the four divine beasts. The azure dragon, the white tiger, the vermilion bird, and the black turtle. These four divine beasts created multiple worlds prior to this one, however, they decided to settle here. They laid down their bodies as the foundation for each of their countries, and their consciousness created new bodies that they used to walk these lands and experience a normal life. Wei Yu was dumbfounded as he heard about these four beasts. He had never thought that they were real. In China, they valued these beasts by naming constellations after them and even went as far as to call them symbols of China. To think that these beasts were real and that he was in a world they created, it was simply unfathomable. Even though Wei Yu was filled with excitement and astonishment, he did not open his mouth even once. Instead, he was focusing on what Lan Feng was saying. He would definitely not repeat this later, Wei Yu thought dejectedly. The phoenix spoke once again, thousands of years passed after the divine beasts created this world and they had started their own families in their individual countries where they settled down. Their descendants were not divine beasts, instead, they were normal humans. Hearing what this odd phoenix said, Wei Yu felt nostalgia wash over him. Immediately he felt how strange it was to feel this as he had no reason whatsoever to feel nostalgia which caused him to assume that these emotions belonged to the phoenix. Time went by, and eventually, the four divine beasts decided to enter an eternal slumber. They had long since buried their original bodies far below the surface of this world and they spent the rest of their energy to create four massive mountain ranges that split the whole continent into four equal parts. Those four parts represented the locations of each of their bodies. In the middle was a large castle they had created when they first came to this world. Each one of the divine beasts called their oldest son to the four beasts palace in the center of the continent. There they passed down their legacy together with some of their powers and the right to lead their kingdom. After this rite of passage was completed, 
they re-entered their original slumbering bodies and went into an eternal slumber. Yet another wave of sadness and nostalgia hit Wei Yu as these final words were spoken. Although these feelings did not belong to him, they greatly influenced Wei Yu's mood. Wei Yu was not a slow person, and he instantly understood that this was part of the Phoenix's story. The sons did a good job and many thousands of years passed by in peace. Civilization flourished, and humans started cultivating their internal powers. However, 4,000 years ago a human tricked the descendant of the Azure Dragon and used his powers to seal and banish the four Beast Clan leaders from this world. This time, he felt a mixture of hate, regret, and pity as he understood part of the reason why the phoenix had ended up as a hairpin. You are the eldest son of the vermilion bird. Wei Yu asked as he decided to make sure his assumptions were right. He had a lot of questions waiting to be answered. That's right, the phoenix said with a proud voice, and Wei Yu understood that he indeed had a right to be proud. Then why are we stuck in a baby's body instead of one matching our age? Wei Yu could not help but ask. Being in an infant's body with the mind of a 24-year-old person was simply too surreal for him to accept. Why don't you try being sealed inside a hairpin for 4,000 years? The phoenix snorted, I had almost no power back then, and only a small fraction got released when I merged with you while you were dying. We share a body right now, so I am unfortunately also quite limited by this arrangement, he continued with disdain. Hey, don't complain about the body. It was you who chose it. Wei Yu pointed out as he laughed at this incredibly haughty phoenix. A strange sense of satisfaction grew within Wei Yu every time he made the phoenix display his unhappiness. Despite Wei Yu having been attracted to the blue phoenix hairpin, he was definitely repulsed by this self-proclaimed phoenix. It was hard to explain why his feelings were like this, and he could not think of any valid reasons, however, something about the phoenix made him annoyed. That being said, Wei Yu genuinely enjoyed hearing about this new world in which he ended up. Especially the story of the four divine beasts which made his heart beat much faster. The phoenix also had a good reason for why he was so arrogant. Not many were able to claim that they were the firstborn son of the vermilion bird. I didn't have many bodies to choose from you know, the phoenix replied. You should be thankful. If I did not help you reincarnate you would have been stuck in the netherworld for god knows how long and then there would be no possibility for you to remember anything about your previous life. It was you who was complaining, Wei Yu laughed as he enjoyed hearing the phoenix trying to persuade him to feel indebted to him. Shut up. Do you want me to continue with the story or not? Hearing that, Wei Yu decided not to argue any further and waited for the phoenix to continue. It has been 4000 years since I was last here, so I don't know how the countries are split up right now, nor do I know who controls what. But I do know about cultivation, and that is one thing that will never change. Wei Yu's interest was piqued even further when he heard the word cultivation. He had cultivated in the past, but he never found it to be helpful. Everywhere in this world is the essence of the heavens and the earth. Every person has something called a lower dantian. This is where one can refine the essence of the heavens and the earth into qi and store it in a qi spiral. Cultivators increase their strength by gathering essence and refining it into qi. Refinement is the first step in the world as a cultivator. The finer one's chi is, the better their results will be. There are three different dantians in the body, but you can only gain access to the next two if you have enough strength. Very confusing, way you thought, as he tried to follow the bird's explanation. The phoenix within him explained quite a bit about this world in a very short amount of time causing Wei Yui to understand very little on the subject. All this caused a slight headache to come his way. It's not my fault it is confusing. The phoenix said without the slightest display of pity, and he quickly continued his monologue giving Wei Yu no time to digest the previous information. Okay, listen closely. Cultivators are ranked into 10 ranks of strength, and every rank is split into 9 stars. The first rank is student, then disciple, which is followed by practitioner. Those three rely solely on the lower dantian, and refinement of essence into qi. After this, the voice paused for a moment causing a smile to appear on Wei Yu's infant face. Although the phoenix claimed that he did not care whether or not he understood, he still paused and allowed Wei Yu to quickly think over the information given committing it into memory. If a person has enough qi of good quality and some cultivating talent it is possible to break into the master rank. The phoenix continued with an overbearing voice pretending that the previous pause never happened. 
Wei Yu was quite amused but chose not to comment on how the phoenix seemed to act cold but was actually considerate. After master rank comes grand master then duke. When a cultivator reaches these three ranks, they still absorb essence into the lower dantian and also refine it to qi, but they also open the middle dantian. The phoenix took another short break before he continued, qi travels from the lower to the middle dantian and gets refined even further into spiritual power. It is much finer than the regular qi, and it allows the cultivator to use higher rank techniques amongst its other uses. The phoenix did not dwell on talking about spiritual power much because it would be a very long time before Wei Yu would even be able to see a spiritual power user. Wei Yu could only approve of this decision. He already felt flooded with new information which he tried to keep from mixing together. The three ranks after that are king, emperor, and saint. To achieve the rank of king, you need to open the final dantian, the upper dantian. It allows the user to refine their spiritual power into Wu Wei. Wu Wei is the ultimate strength, and upon achieving it, you will be in an entirely different league than all other cultivators below this rank. However, it requires building some insane basics from the start at the lower dantian and continuing with intense, grueling training throughout the middle dantian. One can only hope to reach the emperor rank, and because of this they are incredibly rare. The phoenix was quiet for quite some time while trying to think if it explained all the necessary information. This silence was well received by Wei Yu, who was working his brain at the highest possible speed. He managed to digest all the information slowly and made sure to memorize it all. A frown appeared on his infant's face as he thought of everything the phoenix just said, isn't that only nine ranks? Wei Yu said slightly confused, what is the tenth? It's the god rank, Lan Feng answered swiftly. But you don't need to know about that yet. First, it is completely different from the ranks that rely on one's dantians, and second, there have only been four gods as far as I am aware. What rank were you before you were sealed? Wei Yu asked with curiosity but did not expect to be given a proper answer based on their previous history. Surprisingly, the phoenix replied to him honestly, I was at the saint rank before. As far as I know, there has only been four gods in all of history, and they were the four divine beasts. If you were a saint rank then weren't you really strong? The hostility towards the phoenix was dropping slightly, and Wei Yu began to feel more and more curious about this phoenix, the only company he had. The thought of no longer being near Li Fen still hurt him quite badly, but if he focused all his attention on cultivating the essence of the heavens and the earth, there was a chance that he could get past his broken heart. I was very strong before, the phoenix answered smugly, however, this smug feeling was quickly replaced by something that sounded like a sigh. Right now I can't use my powers very well. I am trapped in this body with you. If I was stupid enough to use my strength, I guarantee that this body would explode, and we would both die horribly, but can't you just do another instant reincarnation then? Wei Yu asked. He knew that it was probably unlikely, but at the same time, he also wished to ask all his questions to get a definite answer from the only person who was able to give them. Do you think I am some almighty person? When you die, your soul goes to the netherworld. In the netherworld, it will wander around until you lose all your memories of your previous life. It doesn't matter if it is you or me, we would both forget. I could help us out this one time because I used the last vestiges of my remaining power, but don't expect me to be able to do anything like that for a long time to come. With a hump sound his voice stilled, and way you could sense that he had insulted him. Nevertheless, he didn't stop questioning him and continued unaffected. Then did the four divine beasts turned into other creatures after going to the netherworld. He asked curiously as he wondered what would happen if gods were to reincarnate. They never went to the netherworld. They entered something called eternal sleep. They are asleep and will be sleeping. Forever. Legend says that there is a way to wake them up, but no one has ever found it. The phoenix sighed, showing a certain degree of longing. Wei Yu understood that even if multiple millennia had gone past, this bird still missed his father. What is your name? Wei Yu suddenly asked. He felt fairly guilty having asked so many questions, even been told the whole life story of this phoenix, but he had not tried to get a personal answer such as this. Lan Feng, said the phoenix, and both Wei Yu and Lan Feng were quiet for a long period of time. So, what should we do now? Wei Yu finally sighed not completely sure what step he was supposed to take within this new world which seemed to be waiting for him. I want revenge. 
As soon as we manage to kill the person who was behind tricking the descendant of the Azure Dragon, then I should be able to return to my own body. That is the goal. Lan Feng instantly answered, and anger flared within his voice causing some of it to even make Wei Yu slightly aggressive. What rank was that person? Wei Yu asked out of interest. If I can help this guy, then I might as well try. Wei Yu thought casually. He was an emperor. I see. Wei Yu said, but then he realized exactly what it was that Lan Feng had said. But if you cannot return to your own body then you are stuck in mine, right? You expect me to fight someone ranked that high. He started to panic slightly. He was a perfectionist, and it was true that he was quite curious about this so-called cultivation, but he was not suicidal. Yes I am, and I'll help you to cultivate. Lan Feng assured him almost as if everything had already been decided and Wei Yu had no say in the matter. Why should I do something that dangerous? Give me a reason. Blaming his death on Lan Feng, he had no intention of dying for this unknown person once again. His previous rage was flaring up once more. Lan Feng might have said that it was not his fault, but Wei Yu felt as if Lan Feng was his murderer. When you reach the rank of God you can be reunited with that girl from before. Lan Feng said in a matter-of-fact sort of way, however, that one sentence caused great waves within Wei Yu's soul. Li Fen. He asked breathlessly was that her name? The one you saved before you died, are you certain? Wei Yu asked skeptically. After he died, the thoughts of never again seeing Li Fen had made the pain unbearable. While he was being reincarnated, he hoped that he was not dead, but that Li Fen would pop up as long as he opened his eyes. Wei Yu's face turned grim. Not knowing for sure if Lan Feng was trying to fool him or what but in the end, if there was even a slight chance of reuniting with Li Fen, then he did not mind if he had to go through hell to achieve it. Therefore he patiently waited for Lan Feng to continue. Well yes, Lan Feng said, but before he could continue, he was cut off by Wei Yu, who just thought of something disappointing. If I reach the god rank she will most likely already have lived her life and died already right. He asked with a depressed voice as reality hit him. Lan Feng sighed and replied, that is why I told you to reach the rank of god. When you become a god ranked expert you can safely go to the netherworld and find her soul, then you can create a body for her and restore her memories. Lan Feng clearly used this knowledge to reel in Wei Yu. Both of them needed each other to gain what they wanted the most. Wei Yu was very well aware of this, but even if Lan Feng told him to jump down a cliff, he was willing to do so as long as it united him with Li Fen once more. I will help you cultivate to the rank of God, and you will help me get revenge. After returning your lady to you, our deal will be done, and we can go our separate ways. Do you agree to make a soul contract? Lan Feng asked slightly nervous until he noticed the determination in Wei Yu's soul. Just tell me what to do, Wei Yu replied firmly. End of chapter. Chapter 2. Soul Contract. Wei Yu was firm, and he agreed to do whatever the phoenix required of him, however, even though he agreed he could not help but feel slightly uncomfortable about the unknown. He seems quite happy, Wei Yu thought as he could feel Lan Feng's emotions that were washing over him. Although the phoenix had not said anything, these emotions were all of a pleasing nature, making Wei Yu apprehensive. I did say we need a soul contract, but sadly we can't make one right now, Lan Feng said mildly complaining. The phoenix was clearly not paying any attention to Wei Yu. In order to form a soul contract we need to gather at least the minimum required qi, but considering we are currently stuck in an infant's body, this will take some time to achieve, he stated frankly. Hearing this caused mixed emotions to rise within Wei Yu. At first, he was slightly relieved because he wished to know more about this so-called soul contract. He was not happy with the thought of becoming someone's slave willingly but thinking about the promise of being reunited with Li Fen made his determination unwavering. Although he was relieved about the outlook of not being a slave just yet, he was also a little bit disappointed with the fact that the sketchy soul contract could not already be fulfilled as it was the first step in the process of reuniting with Li Fen. However, to be able to form this soul contract, Wei Yu had to work hard and refine the needed amount of qi. At what age do children usually start cultivating? Wei Yu asked anxiously as he wondered when he could establish this contract with Lan Feng. Feeling that Lan Feng was impatient but calm, Wei Yu also calmed down. He had previously felt apprehensive and slightly worried about the whole soul contract thing, only agreeing to it because of Li Fen, but now he felt more comfortable. He suddenly had the feeling that Lan Feng was not trying to trick him. 
Still, he was certain that there was some hidden motive from this phoenix within his body, that he was not questioning. Though Wei Yu was now somewhat certain the phoenix was not trying to trick him, he grew even more impatient because they would have to wait so long. Neither of them were stupid. Both knew that they would have to walk a long road to reach their goals of reunion and revenge. Wei Yu was aware that in front of him was a new path in life. He was going to be an expert amongst men, a hero amongst heroes. He could not wait to take his first step towards his new life as a cultivator. If a kid starts cultivating early then they usually start when they are about 4 years old, but in general, it is around 6 or 7, Lan Feng said in a mocking tone. Wei Yu was once again thrown into the depths of despair from hearing his answer, and he assumed that the laughter was mocking his character causing his anger to rise yet again. His enmity towards the phoenix had not disappeared. I have to wait for 4 more years before I can cultivate. What do you expect me to do during these years? He aggressively interrogated the ignorant phoenix. He was the one who said he would help me. Wei Yu thought with a harumph, let's see exactly what his plan is for helping me. It's not too bad, Lan Fang answered the angry Wei Yu, his mocking tone still very much present lingering within every word he said, not caring at all about Wei Yu's feelings. I mean you should consider this first. Lan Feng allowed a pleasurable sigh to escape before continuing, we are currently sleeping on a pair of giant tits. I personally wouldn't mind spending a couple years like this. The words made Wei Yu dumbfounded and a sudden urge to punch Lan Feng erupted within Wei Yu, but he was uncertain whether the phoenix was being sarcastic or not. Unfortunately, the two of them were capable of feeling each other's emotions, and a familiar feeling spread from the phoenix. Now, Wei Yu was positive that this creature was a lewd pervert, she is our mother. Wei Yu exclaimed, deeply grossed out by the emotions which were sweeping over him. He tried to make Lan Feng abandon his inappropriate thoughts unfortunately, it did not have much effect. Ah, come on. Sleeping on big TTS is every man's dream. Lan Feng laughed mischievously. Wei Yu could do nothing against the phoenix who now seemed to enjoy both the TTS they were currently hugging and the distress he was causing Wei Yu. You're deranged. Wei Yu mumbled giving up on the subject. By now he had already realized that it was impossible to argue with this self-righteous bird. It also didn't help that every time he tried to argue and got annoyed a stupid sense of happiness assaulted him. It was obvious that the current enmity was very much mutual, it's okay. I'm a mere beast, it's only natural for me to be driven by my beastly desires. Lan Feng said proudly, sharing a body meant that both souls were able to feel what the body felt, could taste what the body tasted, and see what the body saw. The only difference between the two souls was that while Wei Yu was in control of the body, Lan Feng was sitting behind purely experiencing the five senses. A thought suddenly hit Wei Yu, and he furrowed his brows in confusion. Something did not add up about this so-called beast. I listened to your story earlier, he informed Lan Feng. And I am pretty certain that you told me that the descendants of the four divine beasts were humans and not beasts like yourself. Wei Yu was both slightly confused and slightly annoyed. He was certain that Lan Feng was the vermilion bird's descendant, but he was also certain that Lan Feng had said that his descendants were human. This meant that either he was lying about being a beast, or he was lying about his heritage. Either way, having Lan Feng lying to him was one thing which Wei Yu would not accept. If it turned out that he had in fact been lying, then who knew which aspects of the story from earlier were true and which were lies. This made it basically impossible for Wei Yu to trust anything he had been told. I used to be human, that is true, Lan Feng said matter-of-factly, seemingly not intent to hide anything from Wei Yu. But when we received the legacy from our fathers, we turned into beasts. Hearing that it was possible to be turned from a human into a divine beast was something that completely stunned Wei Yu. It made no sense. A fear sprouted within him, a fear that there was nothing unchangeable here, not even one's race or gender. Another point was how easily this phoenix answered any questions that he had. It did not seem to matter whether the answer was something incredibly personal or even uncomfortable, as long as it was a question related to the world they now resided within then the bird was willing to answer it. His quick responses caused some guilt to rise within Wei Yu. He was a person who always considered himself fair towards other people. Someone unprejudiced in judgments towards others. However, for some unknown reason, he was currently incredibly prejudiced against Lan Feng. Lan Feng claimed that he did not kill Wei Yu, 
He also claimed that he had not summoned the truck to endanger Li Fen. Although Wei Yu had always gone by the rule of everyone being innocent until proven guilty, he just changed his belief and blamed the bird for everything. He arrived in this new world where everything seemed absurd and ridiculous to him. He was scared and worried about how he would survive, but this time the phoenix stepped forward and helped him understand where and what he was. But even when Lan Feng answered all his questions, he could not help but feel annoyed at the damned voice in his head. His smugness and haughtiness were simply annoying to no end. The arrogance in his voice made Wei Yu want to give him a very good thrashing. His perverted thoughts were simply too vile for the newly reincarnated human. A sigh escaped the infant's lips and slightly stirred the sleeping mother allowing an approving sound to appear again within Wei Yu's mind. This sound was enough to wash away any feeling of guilt that Wei Yu was currently feeling, and anger replaced it instead. Although it was interesting now was not the time to go into details about Lan Feng's past, nor was it the time to worry about humans turning into beasts because it would not currently help him survive, or there many magical beasts in this world. Wei Yu asked. After he thought things through Wei Yu concluded that divine beasts ought to be fairly rare. However for a beast to turn divine an evolution seemed to be needed. This thought caused him to have some assumptions he wished to clarify. However, although this was a question which Wei Yu asked after some thought, it still caused Lan Feng to snort with contempt. For him this question was silly. Nonetheless, no matter how silly the question, he still replied with a serious answer. Of course, there are magical beasts, Lan Feng replied with a certainty that made Wei Yu feel rather stupid for asking his question. They live everywhere. Some are tamed and domesticated, but the majority of them live in the forests and mountains. Wei Yu nodded as he understood this concept. It sounded exactly like the animals within his old world. However, he now started thinking about whether or not there were any non-magical beasts in this world. Although Wei Yu wished to ask this question, he still waited until Lan Feng finished his explanation about magical beasts. The beasts which have been domesticated will always be weaker than the ones roaming in the wild. If you are strong, you can force some magical beasts to serve you. Most of the bred magical beasts are either for mounts, guard dogs, or some similar duty of that sort. There are definitely a lot more magical beasts than there are humans in this world, though. Wei Yu was not very surprised when he heard that, however, he was slightly surprised to hear how the domesticated beasts had a lower strength than the wild ones. He had assumed that people would breed and mix beasts to create monsters. He had a feeling that this would turn into useful information later on. Then are all beasts in this world magical beasts? Wei Yu finally asked as he knew that Lan Feng was done with his explanation. He continued to try and learn more, but once again he heard a snort, and suddenly a feeling of pity washed over him. Lan Feng was pitying him for being so dumb. This caused another wave of rage to surge within Wei Yu. But even if Wei Yu was angry, he had no intention of giving voice to his emotions, instead, he kept quiet. He needed the phoenix to explain how this world worked and to get the answers he would have to swallow his anger. No, only the beasts who are capable of cultivating are considered magical beasts. Lan Feng replied. Once again, even if he did pity Wei Yu, he gave a very satisfactory reply. Then every beast could turn into a magical beast if it learned to cultivate, but it just rarely happens since they are too dumb to try. Wei Yu nodded thinking it made sense in a way. Cultivation was a very interesting subject. Wei Yu felt astonished as he thought about how cultivation was something which in theory all living creatures were capable of doing, but it seemed that while some were talented others were not. Some knew how to cultivate while others did not, or they simply did not care. Nonetheless, he was incapable of cultivating and instead he regained his focus and paid attention to the following explanation by Lan Feng. While magical beasts are usually hunted by cultivators, Lan Feng continued his explanation of magical beasts. Humans gather their cultivation base into their three dansions while magical beasts gather it in a core which is located within the beast's head. Their core looks like a gemstone, and it contains their essence and chi. A beast's core can be used in different medicinal recipes that can help increase one's cultivation, or its strength can be extracted and used to enchant armor and weapons. There are quite a few ways they can be used by human cultivators, but they are never eaten. Rather, if one eats a core it will absorb all the chi you have patiently cultivated, Wei Yu nodded again. All the information he was given was very valuable. It seemed that the gemstones were of high quality, but he was not silly enough to go hunting for them anytime soon. 
Lan Feng laughed when he noticed Wei Yu's interest was piqued. Magical beasts are split into the same levels of cultivation as humans. However, a human needs to have a much more refined qi to be able to take on a beast of the same level. Well, to be honest, you could win if you had good martial arts skills, and those are something I can help you with I guess. Lan Feng once again sounded so self-satisfied, but this time it only caused Wei Yu to chuckle slightly. Lan Feng did have the right to be self-satisfied as he most likely did have an extensive amount of knowledge hidden within that flaming head of his. Death really does sound like a very common occurrence in this world, Wei Yu commented with a bit of sorrow as he thought about the information he was given by Lan Feng. For some reason it made him feel slightly hesitant about the new life he was forced to live. He had grown up in a world where murder was frowned upon, but to survive in this world, he would without a doubt have to kill people sooner or later. This thought alone made him feel repulsed. His stomach contracted, and he was close to vomiting. Killing shouldn't be a big deal, but thinking about hacking down another human made his complexion pale and nausea swept over him. The thought of blood splattering everywhere, the imagination of flesh being torn, everything made Wei Yu feel sick to his stomach. He had no interest in wondering what it would be like to kill someone. You need to forget your old world, Lan Feng said with a gentle voice as he felt the discomfort Wei Yu had. We have a goal and to achieve that goal you cannot be soft. Wei Yu knew that Lan Feng was right. Thus, he fortified his determination to achieving his goal. Although Wei Yu currently felt sick to his stomach, he knew that there was no turning back. Even the slightest hesitation would end with his death which in turn would result in him no longer being able to be reunited with Li Fen. A chilling coldness appeared in Wei Yu's eyes as he said, I refuse to slaughter needlessly, and I will not touch those who do not trouble me, but if anyone wishes to kill me, I will kill them. If they stand in our way, I will remove them. If you are ready to kill someone, you have to be ready for death yourself. What will you do if family members or friends go against you for revenge? Lan Feng asked. The phoenix was of the philosophy that showing mercy would only injury one later. Let them come. I will fight whoever opposes me, but I will not touch those who have not gone against me. This was the rule that Wei Yu set for himself. This was so he could retain some aspect of his humanity. Hearing this caused Lan Feng to shake his head slightly. Nevertheless, he did not say anything. He knew Wei Yu's current state of mind was still very unstable. The chaos and discomfort from dying were still present, and although Wei Yu said that he was okay with killing it was one thing to say something, but quite another to actually do it. Now was not the time to pressure Wei Yu with his ideals. I am happy that you at least accept killing, Lan Feng said laughingly. There are some things we can do, although we are in the body of an infant. Hearing the laughter within Lan Feng's voice made Wei Yu leave the thoughts of murder behind, and instead, he sighed in despair. He feared that their tit discussion from earlier was resurfacing. The reason that children do not start cultivating before they reach four years old is because it is quite difficult to grasp the method needed to cultivate. Lan Feng said slowly enjoying the hope he felt growing within Wei Yu's mind. The most important part of cultivating is to make sure that the qi you absorb is refined into pure energy. The purer it is, the stronger you will be. Do you remember me saying that earlier? Lan Feng asked. Suddenly his usual haughtiness and arrogance were gone replaced by a newfound seriousness. Wei Yu nodded. He did indeed remember this from earlier. Hearing the seriousness in Lan Feng's voice caused Wei Yu to understand just how important their current conversation was. Thus, it seemed within his heart some of the enmity between the two was finally slowly starting to evaporate. What we need to do is to make sure that you build a very strong and pure energy foundation. Usually for one to gather essence that is turned into qi, they would need to meditate. Another reason why it is so difficult to start cultivation is that meditation needs a specific position at the beginning to help facilitate the refining process. The more used to the refinement you get, the easier it is to absorb essence constantly, even while on the move. Wei Yu nodded, this information made sense. However, he was still not certain how it would help him because he had years to go before he would be able to start meditating. But, I know another way of gathering essence, Lan Feng said slowly. However this way is very taxing, and it is going to take a lot longer than if you were to allow your body to meditate naturally. Wei Yu stopped breathing as excitement overtook him. When he heard Lan Feng mention that there was another way to refine his qi hope grew within him. He quickly let his breath go, and asked breathlessly, So, I can start cultivating now. 
Expectation was evident in his voice, and Lan Feng was very pleased with the eagerness he was showing. His revenge and revival depended on Wei Yu's strength after all. It is possible, Lan Feng continued. But I need to tell you that it really will take a lot longer than anyone else when they start to cultivate. When a four-year-old or five-year-old starts meditating, they will reach the first star student rank within the first day with proper meditation, but with this method, it will take you between half a year and a year to reach the same level. And that is the level we need to reach to be able to perform a soul contract. Wei Yu was a little surprised about how big the difference in essence gathering was, but he was still determined to go through with it. Even if it did take him a year, it was still better than waiting until he was four. Thus, he patiently waited for Lan Feng to explain the procedure. Our current body is really small so the amount of essence we can absorb at a time is minuscule. However, this is actually not a bad thing, Lan Feng started to explain. The smaller the amount of essence you absorb the more attention you can pay it when you refine it. Remember, you need it to be refined to the highest quality, or we will never be able to reach the rank of emperor, Lan Feng said strictly. Wei Yu, in turn, nodded his head in understanding, he knew how important one's foundation was. This method allows you to gain qi of a better quality than your peers, but you will need to spend a lot more effort and time with it. This is why most children don't use it. They would never have the patience to do so, Lan Feng said with a laugh. Being reborn was definitely beneficial for him. For now, I need to explain everything to you, but when we complete the soul contract, I will be able to transfer my knowledge directly to you, Lan Feng stated with a sigh. The sigh clearly represented his feelings on how much of a waste of time it was to explain everything. However, even if he was impatient, he made sure to explain everything thoroughly. Close your eyes and steady your breath, was the first order Lan Feng gave, and Wei Yu quickly did as he was told. Anyone who saw the newborn baby would be unaware of the conversation that was going on inside Wei Yu's mind, as their two souls were communicating within their shared infant body. Lan Feng knew that Wei Yu would be unable to cultivate with the body he had now, so he decided to teach Wei Yu a way to refine essence into Qi using his consciousness alone. I need you to enter your body and search for your lower Dantian. Flow through your veins until you reach the area below your navel, Wei Yu did as he was told, and he was consumed by the sound of his blood flowing through his veins. Shock filled his mind as he noticed that a mental projection of himself was standing in the middle of a tunnel-like structure within his body. Focus. Lan Feng ordered with a stern voice, as Wei Yu was focused on this strange structure inside of him. He jumped in surprise before allowing his soul to descend further and further down until he reached the Dantian where Lan Feng was awaiting him. Within him was an empty cave. A cave which gave him a strange feeling. His consciousness settled down inside, and he quickly noticed the blue orb of fire that was Lan Feng waiting for him there. Astonished he looked around as he never expected to find a cave like this within himself. Even more surprising was the fact that his consciousness looked exactly like he had looked before he died. He was no baby within his consciousness. It is quite big, Lan Feng said approvingly while looking around. This cave will be able to gather quite a lot of qi. Wei Yu had a feeling that it was caused by having both himself and Lan Feng cohabiting within his body. Sit down, cross your legs, and form your hands into the bird hand seal, commanded Lan Feng. Wei Yu was a bit surprised at first but quickly followed the given order. He sat down with crossed legs and made the hand sign as told. Steady your breath and follow the blood out towards your skin. When you reach the outer layer of your body open up a suction force and keep moving at a steady pace until you have gone a whole circle through your body then returned here to your Dantian, Lan Feng explained the best he could. Wei Yu gave a slight nod before his consciousness turned into a streak of light that made its way through his veins sucking up essence from outside. It took him half an hour to go a full circle around his body, and when he returned to the Dantian, he had a small mist of essence that was hanging around his consciousness, similar to a low valley that gathers mist early in the morning. Lan Feng nodded content at the sight. Sit down like before, now make sure you use the bird hand seal. Do not open your eyes no matter what happens, he ordered, and was satisfied when he saw how Wei Yu followed his directions with no questions asked. Keep breathing steadily. With each breath inhale some of the essence around you. Let it spin in a cyclone inside of you until it has turned as white as newly fallen snow. The whiter it is, the purer the quality, Lan Feng gave the final order before he stopped talking. 
The orb of blue fire was quiet as he spent his time observing Wei Yu refining the essence he gathered. Wei Yu ended up spending five hours refining the essence. When he finally finished, all the essence around him had vanished, instead, it was replaced by a fine thread of qi. It was of the purest white. So white that it was shining and it kept swirling around itself in the middle of his Dantian cave. Wei Yu was exhausted but gratified. The amount of effort he had put in had only amounted to a single qi thread that looked so alone inside the empty cave. However, this single qi thread was the product of Wei Yu's hard work, and he felt great satisfaction within his heart. Well done Wei Yu. That is a very good quality qi, Lan Feng said happily. He had never seen qi this pure before. Wei Yu had spent more time refining it than even Lan Feng expected. Rest for today, we will do it again tomorrow. This will take a lot of time, Wei Yu nodded. Although he wished for the possibility of being a great talent, he quickly acknowledged that he needed to be realistic. Being a great talent was not very likely. The days went by one after another. Wei Yu spent around six hours every day absorbing essence and refining it into qi. He wanted to absorb energy twice a day, but Lan Feng would not allow him to because the refinement took a lot of energy. If he were to try twice a day, the quality of qi was likely to drop. Upon hearing the reasons, Wei Yu acquiesced. He wanted only the highest quality qi possible. Deep inside he was grateful for the help the phoenix was giving him, and their initial enmity had almost completely dissipated. In return, Lan Feng was slightly less haughty towards Wei Yu as he, in turn, was astonished by the boy's perseverance. Wei Yu never complained as he struggled day after day while absorbing the essence and refining it. Wei Yu's qi was of a quality much purer than his own had been before, and the fact that Wei Yu followed any order given caused Lan Feng to take a liking to the stubborn young man. Apart from refining qi, Wei Yu began to understand that he was born into a poor family. He had no siblings, but his parents were both young. His mother, named Wei Lifen, was younger than Wei Yu had been in his previous life. Leaving Wei Yu feeling rather odd about the whole situation. His father, Wei Guang, was earning money by going into the forest and collecting medicinal herbs. Nevertheless, he could only gather low-grade medicine as they had the least amount of danger. Both of his parents were student-ranked cultivators, his mother was a four-star while his father was a seven-star student. Lan Feng said it was the result of not cultivating, but by passively absorbing essence during their everyday life. It was likely that everyone from his village was ranked somewhere in the student level because they did not have the resources or knowledge to seriously cultivate. Even if they managed to reach the 9-star student rank, the quality of their qi would be too poor to allow for any breakthrough. Everyone who worked in this village lived by gathering medicinal herbs and once a month they would travel towards Ruluo City and sell them. As none of them were cultivators, they would be given the absolutely lowest price possible for the herbs, but that was enough for everyone in the village to survive. Even if they were poor, everyone would help each other, and the whole village was incredibly friendly. Wei Yu's new mother looked after their shack while growing vegetables. During the day she also helped look after the few animals that the village raised. She would bring Wei Yu with her on her daily chores to watch over him, but Wei Yu would usually be sleeping. Wei Yu spent the night cultivating and then would sleep during the day pretending to be a child while looking at the other children he was supposed to play with. Lan Feng would usually just sleep his days away or give Wei Yu a little information about the world they were now living in. Wei Yu was a beautiful baby. Everyone adored his big eyes and fair skin. His skin never got tanned. Even when his parents brought him outside under the sun all day, the village elders would say that he was as fine-skinned as a noble lady. His hair and eyes were black much like in his previous life. His appearance and temperament made him a very loved child throughout the whole village. With the passing of days, eight months quickly went by. Wei Yu quietly and diligently gathered essence and refined it into qi during this time. The quality had not dropped at all from when he started, but the fine thread had turned into many threads that were swirling around all over his Dantian cave. Nonetheless, Something occurred after Wei Yu finished refining his qi thread for the day. All the threads grouped together and tangled into each other. They merged into a long rope of qi. A rope that swirled around itself in a cone-like spiral in the middle of his cave. The rope was so white that it shone brilliantly. The light being emitted from the spiral radiated throughout Wei Yu's infant body imbuing it with a power he had never felt before. 
Shock and happiness were evident on his face as he understood that he had finally reached the first star student level, well done. Lan Feng said from the side of the cave where the blue orb of fire moved towards the Qi spiral. Now, Wei Yu are you still willing to make a soul contract with me? He asked while inspecting the spiral. Wei Yu nodded, clearly excited to see what would happen now. As soon as Lan Feng heard his reply a flame shot out from the fire orb. A flame which absorbed the entire Qi spiral. Wei Yu stared bewildered. He was dumbfounded to see his eight months of hard work disappear in a flash. As the Qi entered the blue orb, it grew in size sizzling with power before it finally burned down and left behind something human-shaped. The anger which had been dormant for so long started rising again until he noticed that the human shape left behind started moving. Wei Yu stared as the person slowly straightened out. It was a boy who seemed to be around 10 years old. Both his eyes and hair were azure blue, and his whole body was covered with small white feathers that were so white it gave him a celestial aura. Wei Yu was astonished as he saw the boy, but he quickly adjusted and smiled. Who would have guessed that Lan Feng was actually a 10-year-old boy? Although Wei Yu was shocked, this world already held so many surprises that Wei Yu no longer felt greatly shocked upon seeing the display which just occurred. Idiot, Lan Feng exclaimed while watching Wei Yu. He was displeased as he felt that Wei Yu was making fun of his current form. You have the body of an infant, and I need to scale down my consciousness too, or our body would explode from my mental energy alone, he explained. Lan Feng went straight towards Wei Yu without giving him any time to reply. He took out his hand and with his nail made a long cut on his palm. No blood appeared, but instead, a silver-colored liquid slowly oozed out. Wei Yu clearly understood what was expected of him and copied the gesture. He held out his hand towards Lan Feng who grasped both hands together and allowed the liquid to merge. A voice, which sounded much older than what should have, came from his body and resonated within the Dantian cave. You hold my soul, and I hold yours. In accordance with the ancient soul contract, we are now one and one shall we be till death do us part our goals achieved. As soon as the words were said, a huge power forced its way through the cut in Wei Yu's hand and circled his entire consciousness a few times before retracting itself into Lan Feng's palm. At the time it left him, Wei Yu felt some of his own consciousness return to him giving him the feeling of being complete again, a strange feeling since he had never felt that he was not complete before. As soon as the power vanished Wei Yu felt as if he had been exercising excessively as his whole body ached. He was exhausted. Lan Feng too seemed rather tired as he sat down and leaned against the cave wall. Wei Yu walked to him and sat down beside him. He then closed his eyes. So my eight months of hard work needs to be redone. He said with a sigh as he looked at his now empty cave. Lan Feng heard the exhaustion in Wei Yu's voice and laughed gently. No, it will come back when you rest. But you do need to continue refining every day. We need you to get stronger after all. Wei Yu nodded as relief flooded him. It would have been depressing if his eight months of hard work had really vanished just like that. Lan Feng looked at Wei Yu and smirked. The soul contract caused some changes to Wei Yu's appearance, but Lan Feng felt no reason to tell him just yet as he noticed how the consciousness turned blurry. He saw Wei Yu slipping into a deep sleep. Morning broke as usual on this day, and Wei Yu's father was on his way to the forest when his eyes fell upon his son who was sound asleep in his crib. His eyes widened, and he froze up before he finally woke up his wife. What's wrong? Wei Lifen asked with a grainy voice while rubbing her eyes. Yuer has white hair now. Wei Guang said in a disbelieving voice as his eyes never once left the crib where their child was asleep. The words caused Wei Lifen to furrow her brows in disbelief, but she quickly looked at their baby and instantly shrieked. The shriek woke up Wei Yu who opened his eyes and looked at his parents curiously wondering why they would shriek upon seeing him. But, soon his question was quickly answered. His eyes are blue. Wei Lifen gasped full of disbelief. End of chapter. Chapter 3. Unexpected Visitors. The village was abuzz with activity as soon as the news of Wei Yu's change in appearance spread. Everyone who saw him had the impression that they were looking at an angel. His white hair was purer than newly fallen snow, and his beautiful blue eyes were like a mirror of the endless sky. Everyone visited the Wei family shack to see the beautiful infant, but even if they admired his looks, a certain fear crept into their hearts. No one could explain why the child would change so suddenly overnight, however, everyone had their own theories. 
Some blamed it on a horrible nightmare that scared him so much that his appearance changed, others claimed it was a curse from some strong magical beast which was unhappy with the villagers for harvesting medical herbs in the forest. Still others were convinced that he was suffering from some kind of disease, but no matter what theory they came up with no one really knew why it had happened. Although Wei Yu's appearance shocked the village, it was quickly accepted as normal because the infant did not seem to affect others nor was he causing any disasters to the village. Within a year everyone fully accepted that the changes to Wei Yu were unexplainable, and he once again returned to be the darling child of the villagers. Within the year, Wei Yu managed to get some control over his body and was able to walk around on unsteady legs, however, every movement that Wei Yu made required extra attention as he had no intention of revealing his actual strength to anyone. During this year, Wei Yu finally managed to get his speech under control. Lan Feng was entertained while listening in on his efforts to turn his baby language into actual words, but both Lan Feng and Wei Yu felt incredible relief when they finally managed to say their first word correctly. Saying his first word was like releasing a flood upon dried land, and Wei Yu managed to completely master the spoken language within a month. However, he had to conceal his linguistic skills, just like his strength, as he felt no reason to attract unwanted attention from the villagers once again. Upon reaching the first star level, Wei Yu noticed that 20 new paths unsealed in his body opened up by the influx of new energy, and each permeated with a sensation of catharsis. Of those 20, only 12 were currently accessible, and his chi spiral constantly sent small threads of chi to roam the open paths. As his chi roamed his chi paths a sense of strength flooded Wei Yu's body and he felt immense joy from experiencing this sudden strength. Lan Feng gave a brief explanation. The twelve open paths were the standard meridians, and they were a network of qi connections that enabled his qi to circulate through his body. The meridians were split into yin-yang clusters, and each path had a specific concentration of yin or yang energy. The eight closed meridians would require much effort to open, and currently, Lan Feng saw no reason to focus on them as he was not likely to fight anytime soon. Lan Feng refused to explain more about the mysterious yin and yang energy as he stressed the fact that it had no actual usage before Wei Yu managed to unlock his middle dantian. Wei Yu sighed upon hearing this, however, he understood that there was no reason for him to insist on an explanation since he knew that Lan Feng would definitely tell him in due time. Another benefit upon reaching the first star was that he was capable of gathering more essence at one time than before while still refining it into the highest quality qi. Time rushed by as Wei Yu kept on refining Qi and this also let him understand how different his new body was compared to his old one. During these four years of quiet refining and self-introspection Wei Yu managed to stay as average as possible, but despite this, he was still the most popular, well-liked child in the village due to his calm demeanor and stunning looks. At this time he was now almost five years old, and he had the strength of a ten-year-old child. A few months after turning five years he finally reached the second star student rank after meticulously refining thread after thread of shining white qi. Lan Feng ordered Wei Yu to keep refining his qi by using his consciousness in the way he had been doing so far, even though he had long since gained enough control over his body to meditate. For the sake of a perfect foundation, Wei Yu kept refining and absorbing essence with his consciousness until reaching the level of a first star disciple. Although it was a hard and relentless job, Wei Yu had no intention of complaining. Now he could refine four qi threads a day, and each thread was triple the size of the first one he had managed to create all those years ago. As Wei Yu grew older, he was given the task of guarding the few goats that the village bred. For this task, he would usually wake up at dawn every morning, eat some porridge that his mother cooked, and then happily gather the goats before heading towards a random hillside outside the village. At this age most of the children were usually given easier tasks, however, Wei Yu's calm personality and great temperament invoked admiration with the village elder, and Wei Yu had happily accepted the task. He did so because it was beneficial for him to be outside the village to avoid curious gazes while he cultivated. It was one of those days where the sun was shining brightly in the sky with no clouds in sight, and the few goats were peacefully grazing on the hillside around Wei Yu as he cultivated. However, Wei Yu furrowed his brow as he felt like something was wrong. There is a large group of people coming this way, Lan Feng said with a worried voice as he sensed the aura of cultivators. Wei Yu did not waste any time as he gathered his goats then rushed back to the village, village elder. 
Wei Yu yelled the moment he entered the village, and upon speaking, everyone turned their attention towards the beautiful child. The face that was usually indifferent now had a slightly frantic expression on it as he called for the village elder, What's wrong boy? The elder asked in a tender voice as no one had ever seen Wei Yu this flustered before, A large group of people are headed this way. Wei Yu said breathlessly after running all the way back, They have some cultivators in their group as well. They seemed really strong. Wei Yu's big blue eyes were staring at the village elder, who paled upon hearing this. The news quickly spread around the village, but all the men were working in the forest gathering medicinal herbs and only the women and children remained in town. Everyone. The elder quickly roared, gather your belongings and go to our protective shelter in the forest now. As soon as the order was given, everyone rushed around gathering the livestock and items that had any value before they gathered in a long line, heading towards the shelter. After seeing his fellow villagers safe, the village elder refused to follow as he was uncertain whether the visitors were bandits or adventures and regardless someone had to welcome the guests either way. Wei Yu stared at the elderly man for a moment before making the decision to stay and observe what a real cultivator looked like. If things went badly, he was certain that he would at least be able to flee. You err, we need to go now, his mother said with a frightened voice, but she noticed a strange determination in Wei Yu's eyes. Mother, please let me stay, I promise I won't be hurt, Wei Yu said with a sweet voice. This was the first time that Wei Yu had ever asked anything of his parents, and his mother hesitated slightly. Although Wei Yu's temperament did not fit a four-year-old, he was still her baby, and she was very worried about him. It's okay mother, Wei Yu reassured her with a stunning smile. They will not even know I am here. If they are bandits, then I will quickly run away and hide. Wei Lifen could only sigh and turned around as she passed along all her items to one of her friends. She decided to stay behind together with Wei Yu to await the uninvited visitors. The two hid behind a building close to the village square and kept their eyes on the road that led into town. The village elder himself was waiting in the middle of the square right next to the main well. He stood straight and had a dignified look on his face. It did not take long before the group of people entered the village, and Wei Yu gasped in surprise as he saw them. It was a large group of around 50 people. Half of them were mounted on student-ranked magical horses. At the front of the group were three people. A middle-aged man followed by two children who seemed to be around 10 years old. These three individuals were not riding on normal magical beasts but Keelans instead. The middle-aged man was riding on an adult Keelan while the children were riding on what seemed to be yearlings. Wei Yu was astonished by the beauty of the Keelans. Their whole bodies were covered with dark green scales that got lighter under their stomachs and on the inside of their legs. Their tail, mane, and hooves were covered in red flames, and their red eyes were vigilantly observing the surroundings. This was the first time that Wei Yu saw a real magical beast. He was greatly impressed by their beauty, but at the same time, he understood just how savage these wild beasts would be if they were not tamed. Wei Yu noticed that his mother was also stunned by the appearance of these beautiful Keelans as her eyes shone with excitement. His mother had never seen a magical beast before as she lived within the safe borders of the village and had no reason to travel outside. Suddenly the village elder's voice rang through the air and shook Wei Yu's focus from the Keelans. This lowly one greets Lord Rong Liang, the village elder said before kowtowing on the ground in front of the middle-aged man. Wei Yu was confused for a moment before he understood that this man was not a bandit. The name did ring a bell, but he was currently unable to pair the name with anyone specific. It's because you don't do anything other than cultivate, Lan Feng said with a mocking voice as he observed what was happening with a keen eye. I just follow your orders, Wei Yu stated dismissively at Lan Feng before asking, Do you remember who he is? However, what he got was a depressed, No, why on earth would I remember a middle-aged man? That girl, on the other hand, will definitely turn into a beauty later. He continued while looking at the girl who was riding on the left side of Lord Rong Liang. Wei Yu could not help but snort at the reply, she is 10 years old you pervert. He said with disdain as his attention was still focused on the elder who had now risen while the two children and Lord Rong Liang had dismounted. That's why I said when she grows up. Lan Feng continued, don't be so shocked by something like this. They are not even that strong for a Keelin. If you want to see a real one, then we need to find wild Keelins. The ones that still have their antlers and whiskers. Now they are worthy of some respect. 
Lanfeng was once again speaking arrogantly, and Wei Yu could not help but suck in some air as he heard what the phoenix said. He was already astonished by these magical beasts, but they could only find disdain in Lanfeng's heart. An incredible urge to go searching for a real Qilin suddenly appeared in Wei Yu's heart. Lanfeng laughed upon sensing Wei Yu's desire, but just as he laughed a breeze blew from behind them and carried their scent to the village square where the Qilins were standing. The moment Wei Yu and Lan Feng's scent reached the group of horses and Qilins they instantly panicked. Lan Feng and Wei Yu had merged souls, so Wei Yu carried the scent of a saint-ranked beast which was enough to terrify any other magical beast to its very soul. Lord Rong Liang was shocked when he noticed the Qilin's panic and was forced to use his power to forcibly calm them down. Wei Yu's eyes grew large as he saw a gray mist that instantly calmed down all the mounts in it, causing them to look drugged. That is spiritual energy, Lan Feng said with a quiet voice. He has trapped all of them in an illusion so for now they can't do anything. He is quite strong. Wei Yu felt lucky to be able to see such a high-ranked expert, but he was also aware that the reaction of the mounts caused Lord Rong Liang to become alert, and that he and his mother would most definitely be noticed very quickly. Come out little mouse, the lord said with a friendly voice, and Wei Yu had no reason to stay behind. He grasped his mother's hand and slowly moved clear of the house they were hiding behind. The village elder raised an eyebrow upon seeing them but said nothing. I'm really sorry mister, Wei Yu said with tears in his eyes and in the most adorable voice he could muster. I just really wanted to see someone from outside the village, so I hid and accidentally got my mother caught up as well. Lord Rong Liang was shocked upon seeing the mother and child. He saw no reason why any of them would cause his Keelans to panic, but the closer the two of them came towards the village square the more spiritual energy was needed to keep the mounts pacified in his illusion. The child was stunningly beautiful as his white hair and blue eyes were so exotic that Lord Rong Liang refused to believe that he really was a human child. Where are the rest of the villagers? Lord Rong Liang finally asked while looking around the deserted village. We were not certain whether the approaching party was friend or foe, therefore, I had them hide in our protective shelter, the elder answered with a humble and rather embarrassed voice. You knew we were coming. Surprise was evident in Lord Rong Liang's voice as he was not used to anyone being capable of noticing him while traveling, and he was certain that everyone within this village were only student-ranked cultivators. This young one saw your noble party while guarding the goats on the hillside your lordship, Wei Yu said hurriedly, the personification of a slightly scared but curious child. Lan Feng was laughing loudly while enjoying the play. Lord Rong Liang nodded upon hearing that they had been spotted on the way, but his eyes never left the beautiful child in front of him. If he were a half-blooded magical beast, it would indeed be a rare treasure that he would want to acquire at any price. You do not look like the other villagers, are you an orphan? He asked curiously, and Wei Yu instantly felt a tinge of danger hidden within his words. No my lord, Wei Lifen spoke up this time. Our way you looked like any other child at birth, but during his first year we experienced an incident that caused his current appearance. She said with great respect while kowtowing on the ground. Lord Rong Liang was used to a life of scheming against others, and he could instantly tell that the woman was telling the truth. This both confused and interested him as the young. Child did not seem as simple as he expected. Village elder please bring the rest of the villagers back. Our party will be setting up camp just outside of your village for a month as we prepare for our trip into the forest. Lord Rong Liang said with a firm voice, and the village elder quickly nodded before turning towards Wei Yu and his mother sending them off to recall the rest of the villagers. Wei Yu and Lan Feng were as quiet as possible. Neither of them wished for this new lord to see their current level of strength, nor did they wish for anything else to be noticed, so they were quite happy when they were able to leave quickly. Wei Yu quickly cupped his hands before he hurried out from under the gaze of Lord Rong Liang and his two children. We are going to have some trouble, Lan Feng said with a worried voice, and Wei Yu could only nod in agreement. End of chapter. Chapter 4. His first friend. Wei Yu quickly gathered the villagers who barricaded themselves in the protective shelter. Every villager was astonished and proud when they heard that the great Lord Rong Liang had decided to use their humble village as the campsite for his entourage. Wei Yu, however, did not share their sentiments as he felt a sense of danger whenever he was within sight of the esteemed lord. Lord Rong Liang would always look at Wei Yu with a certain degree of interest, and Wei Yu was very unhappy with anyone who showed interest in his affairs. The first day was chaos. The guards were split into groups. 
Some put up their tents in the camp, others hunted for provisions, and a third group scouted the area ensuring that everything was safe. The village that Wei Yu lived in was so small that it had never been given a specific name. The villagers were so poor that no bandits would ever bother coming by even if they knew where the village was. But now as Lord Rong Liang was a very important person who was traveling with his two children, it was quite possible that his enemies would send assassins to deal with him while he was away from the city he managed. The women in the village would find any excuse possible to walk past the campsite and look at the guards. Some would blatantly flirt with the men hoping they would take a liking to them. They hoped the guards would take them away from their poverty-stricken lives. Though others would blush and run away the moment their eyes met. Wei Lifen was also interested in the campsite, but unlike most of the young women, she wanted to hear stories about the outside world. Wei Lifen was a very beautiful woman, and the guards were glad to fulfill her desire and talk about life in the busy cities. Wei Yu had been dragged to the camp by his mother, but fortunately, he managed to escape while she was captivated by these exciting stories. Wei Yu had to be careful around any expert with a higher cultivation than himself as they had the ability to detect his cultivation base. Lan Feng was capable of faking their cultivation base and making it look like someone who did not cultivate for a short amount of time, however, this would not last for long, and neither Wei Yu nor the Phoenix felt like letting people know about his cultivation level. Wei Yu chose to stay home after he escaped from his mother, and he managed to refine yet another qi thread before both of his parents returned home to prepare dinner. Dinner today was quite luxurious as Lord Rong Liang's party handed out all the extra meat they acquired on their hunt. You are, Wei Lifen said when she saw Wei Yu. Lord Rong Liang asked about you again, she continued happily. He says he has never seen a disease such as yours before, and would very much like to examine it later on. At her words, Wei Yu felt his blood freeze over. It was clear that Lord Rong Liang did not believe that Wei Yu was an ordinary boy. I am fine, I am sure it will just waste the time of the esteemed lord. Wei Yu said meekly, but his mother quickly dismissed his worries. Lord Rong Liang was the one who requested to examine you. I am sure he just wants to understand your disease. It would be rude to turn him away now that he has visited our village. Wei Yu could only grit his teeth as he agreed to visit the camp early in the morning before going out with the goats. The morning broke as usual, and after eating a quick breakfast, Wei Yu ran out the door disappearing into the thick morning mist. Wei Yu left the shack earlier than normal as he had no excuse to not visit Lord Rong Liang on the way. However, Wei Yu was not dumb, and he was very well aware that there was no way that the Lord would be awake so early, and since Wei Yu had a specific task to do during the day he had a good reason to come by at this ungodly hour. Halt. A stern voice suddenly roared out in the chilled morning air. The voice caused Wei Yu to instantly stop while waiting for the guard to arrive at his location. The guard furrowed his brow and looked at the beautiful child who was definitely no older than five years old. The morning mist that was gathering around his white hair and pale skin made him seem as if he was a fairy that had stepped out from an ancient legend. State your purpose. He said with hostility evident in his voice, and Wei Yu was quite impressed with the guard's vigilance. I'm Wei Yu. He said once again with his sugar-coated voice. Lord Rong Liang said that he wanted to examine my disease, but unfortunately, it is my job to look after the goats therefore I have to take them to the hillside before dawn every morning. Wei Yu continued with a saddened voice and a downcast face. The guard could not help but feel a slight tinge of sadness upon seeing his downcast face, but even if he pitied the child, he had no intention of waking up Lord Rong Liang at this godforsaken hour. Looking at the guard hesitating, Wei Yu looked down as he said, I understand, in a low voice, while he internally cheered together with Lan Feng. Can you please tell his lordship that I wished to be here? but Mama always says that I have to be responsible and not skip work. Wei Yu looked at the guard once more, this time with a hint of unshed tears about to burst forth. Of course I'll tell him. The guard said right away, and he was rewarded with a happy and naive smile that spread on Wei Yu's face. No one would have expected that this was exactly the result the said child wanted by arriving so early. Wei Yu quickly thanked the guard and waved goodbye before rushing back towards the village pen so that he could get far away from the village in case the sensitive Lord Rong Liang noticed him and were to suddenly wake up. Wei Yu could not help but feel slightly paranoid, as he remembered Murphy's law from his past. Wei Yu decided to move to a hillside that was quite difficult to find. 
He was finally able to relax a little after cultivating for a couple of hours with no one interrupting him. He was certain that even if Lord Rong Liang wanted to locate him, he would have a very hard time as no one knew these hillsides as well as Wei Yu. However, Lan Feng warned him that someone was coming his way just as Wei Yu had decided to eat his packed lunch. It is not Rong Liang. Lan Feng said with a curious voice, but it is definitely not anyone from the village either. Hearing Lan Feng say that caused Wei Yu to be on guard, but he quickly realized that even if he wanted to protect himself and the goats, there was really nothing he could do. Wei Yu spent all his time gathering essence and refining qi. He did not even know one martial arts skill to make use of his accumulated strength. You useless phoenix, Wei Yu was swearing in his mind. What is the point of this well-refined qi if I can't even protect my life against some bandits? He was growing frantic as he really had no other option than to hope that the approaching person was friendly. Both Lan Feng and Wei Yu were quite surprised when they finally saw who the person was. This person should never have been able to find his hiding place, however, here he was, Lord Rong Liang's son. He had a big smile on his face when he noticed Wei Yu, and he even carried a beautiful flower in one hand. Wei Yu was not dumb and guessed that Lord Rong Liang most likely was busy at the camp and had sent his son to try and gather information. Therefore, Wei Yu had no other option than to be friendly towards this newcomer. Young master, what are you doing all the way out here? Wei Yu asked with his big eyes and a voice as clear as the cloudless sky. His voice seemed to cause Lord Rong Liang's son to smile as he handed the flower to Wei Yu. I saw this flower in the forest and thought of your beauty, so I decided to come and deliver it personally. This was the first thing that the young master ever said to Wei Yu, and Wei Yu could not help himself from freezing momentarily before goosebumps appeared on his skin. Something was definitely wrong with the wrong family. While Wei Yu was stunned, Lan Feng was laughing his heart out. This caused Wei Yu's mind to explode with noise, however, he quickly regained his composure and looked at the flower. It was indeed beautiful. It was a white orchid with a warm, yellow core. Its beauty was unrivaled amongst flowers in the forest, but it could also be used to create a deadly poison. Hey, this is great. Lan Feng said while trying to restrain his laughter, however, it was not very successful, and he was still constantly giggling. Ah, this is beautiful, young master. Wei Yu said with shining eyes while looking at the very self-satisfied young boy. I will definitely treasure it. Inside, Wei Yu was impatient. He could not wait for this young master to leave so that he could return to cultivating, but on the other hand, he did not intend to let the young boy suspect that he was abnormal. Therefore his only option was to patiently wait for the other to leave. The young master quickly sat down on the grass and found his own lunch before asking Wei Yu to sit next to him. Wei Yu outwardly smiled looking proud and slightly embarrassed by being allowed so close to a noble, but inwardly he was sighing and trying to figure out a way to chase the annoying boy away. Is it really okay for young master to spend your valuable time out here on the hills together with the goats? Wei Yu asked fearfully. He hoped that the young master really did have some chores to attend to back at camp, but the young boy did not seem as if he intended to leave anytime soon. Call me wrong Ming, he said while playing with the grass around him. Wei Yu was shocked. Why on earth did he have to become the playmate of some noble boy when he had more important things to deal with, but as usual, he would not risk allowing the young master to have any suspicions that he could tell his father about. Instead, he said, Rong Ming, with a low voice and forced a blush to creep onto his cheeks. You are a great actor. Lan Feng praised him while dying from laughter. Although Lan Feng did enjoy watching Wei Yu get stronger, he also enjoyed the current situation thoroughly as well. It was a lot less boring than staring at goats, grass, and chi threads all day long. Wei Yu mentally sighed as he knew there would be no help from his phoenix friend, and instead decided to give up on cultivating today and just play along with this city boy. Hopefully, he could grasp some information about the city or outside world from him because Lan Feng was useless when it came to current world knowledge. Why do you need to enter the magical forest? Wei Yu asked Rong Ming with a frightened look on his face. He knew that his family feared the core area of the magical forest, as the beasts who lived there were very dangerous. He was baffled why anyone who lived a luxurious lifestyle would want to experience such dangers. Rong Xing, my sister, and I need to see some of the martial skills we are practicing in real combat. Rong Ming answered while lying down on the grass and looking out at the clear blue sky above, 
Young master, can you tell me about life outside the village? Wei Yu asked with a breathless voice, and his eyes gleamed with curiosity. This was one time where he did not need to actually act, this was something that he truly wanted to know. Rong Ming smirked satisfactorily upon seeing the young child having such an expression and told him to lie down as he would explain a little. Our father is the lord of Rilo city and the surrounding areas, and therefore I am his heir, Rong Ming said first with a very proud voice. There is not a cultivator around stronger than my father. Wei Yu could not help but chuckle. Although Rong Ming was supposed to be a mature child, he was still a child, and all children loved to brag about their parents. Are you a cultivator? Wei Yu asked curiously while looking at the young boy that was lying next to him. Um hum, was the answer, both Xing and I have reached the ninth star of the student level. We are definitely the best student-ranked cultivators in school, but we need to train harder. I have to make father proud, he said with a determined voice. His voice and passion did cause Wei Yu to gain some respect for the young child. He himself had struggled for five years just to reach the second star. Why is your hair white? Rong Ming suddenly asked. Wei Yu had been expecting the question to appear earlier, so he was not surprised when it was finally asked. I don't know, he said honestly. One night it was black, and the next morning it was white. I don't remember anything since I was a baby. Wei Yu said with a sigh, and Rong Ming got the impression that he was asked this question quite often. What is the city like? Wei Yu quickly asked before Rong Ming had the chance to ask more questions, and the rest of the afternoon passed with Rong Ming telling Wei Yu about clothing stores, restaurants, the harbor and the marketplaces. To Wei Yu, it sounded very much like what a normal big city would have been like in his world, and it gave him a slight feeling of relief. Relief that he could count on some of his previously acquired knowledge when he entered the cities for the first time. Wei Yu stood up as dusk arrived and guided the goats and Rong Ming back to the village. He split up with the young master right as they reached the village pen, and then he rushed home under the excuse of promising his mother to always hurry straight back. Wei Yu couldn't help but let out a relieved sigh when he finally reached home. Although he had gotten some good information, he still wasted a whole day of cultivating. They are 10 years old, and they are already at the ninth star. I really need to step up. Wei Yu complained to Lan Feng. Don't stress it, was the answer. Although they are at the ninth star it is obvious that their chi is not of as good quality as yours. If they want to advance into the middle Dantian, they will need to use a great deal of chi refining medicine, and it can't guarantee success. Wei Yu could not help but feel slightly good upon hearing that his hard work did have its benefits. Oh yeah, he said while eating some steamed buns that were left for him in the kitchen. I really need to learn some martial arts skills without them I will have some serious problems. Wei Yu complained, and Lan Feng could only agree. There is one issue, though. Lan Feng said, When I started cultivating my father directly opened up my middle Dantian, so most of my skills require spirit power or elemental affinity. Wei Yu was completely confused upon hearing his words. Elemental affinity. What was that? Right. I didn't explain it earlier since it would have been too much information, but I'll explain now. Lan Feng said slowly. The chi you are gathering right now is pure white chi. You can use normal chi for martial arts, and because it has no affinity but that is why it is restricted to martial arts alone. Right now you don't have an affinity with any elements because you still have not accessed your middle dantian and released it. I thought that the middle dantian was for spirit power. Wei Yu said questioningly, he did kind of understand affinities, but what did it have to do one spirit power, right? So chi is used for martial arts. Spirit power is used for spiritual arts. I guess this would be referred to as magic back in your old world. Your spirit power, or as you know it magic, is affected by your affinity. Let's say you have an affinity for fire then you will be able to use your spirit power to learn fire related attacks. Together with this, there are certain spirit attacks that are not determined by affinity, but they are incredibly rare. One of them was the illusion you saw Rong Liang use on the Keelans. Wei Yu nodded as it made sense, so do you know any martial arts? He asked quickly, as he understood that martial arts were what he had to learn. I know some, Lan Feng said hesitantly, but they are all quite high leveled. I am not sure if they will be of any use to you right now, it is worth a try. Wei Yu said determined, and Lan Feng had to agree. It was definitely better than being completely defenseless. Oh right, he said quickly. I am not sure which affinity you have, but since we share a soul, 
You will definitely be able to use my affinities as well. Wei Yu's eyes grew with excitement. Which affinity do you have? Lan Feng snorted at the obvious question. Obviously fire, but not normal fire, it is blue fire. Does it have any awesome properties apart from looks? Wei Yu could not help but ask. He had, after all, received a new look thanks to this phoenix, however, he had not gained any awesome powers in the process. I don't know, Lan Feng said carelessly. I never bothered comparing it to normal fire, so I'll let you deal with that. Wei Yu could not help but chuckle slightly, as it was very typical for Lan Feng not to care. Deep inside he was curious to see which affinity he had. I'll teach you a martial arts skill when the cultivating party disappears. Lan Feng promised before the two of them slipped into a deep sleep. The following morning Wei Yu once again set out towards the hillsides with the goats. This time he hoped he would be able to catch up with the time he lost cultivating from the day before. After having heard about affinities and magic abilities, Wei Yu could not wait until he unlocked his middle dantian. The word magic made him as giddy as the little child he was supposed to be. However, his great mood was quickly killed as he saw a person moving towards him in the early morning mist. Wei Yu. Rong Ming called out excitedly, while Wei Yu could only sigh inwardly. He once again laughed and greeted the young master with the utmost excitement. This day Rong Ming told Wei Yu about how he cultivated and trained. Every large city within the empire had a royal academy for cultivators. The royal academy was split into the inner circle and the outer circle. The outer circle consisted of students who relied solely on qi and the lower dantian while the inner circle only allowed those who had broken through to the ranks of master or above. The inner circle was located within the kingdom's capital city while the outer circle was located within every large city. The academy enrolled students from the age of 10 and they needed to be at least at the 5 stars student level, or if not some very rich noble parents could pay an insane tuition fee. One's cultivating speed would increase upon reaching the disciple rank, and the academy helped with both medicinal pills and martial arts skills. Each year every academy would send five students to the capital where they held the outer rank tournament for disciple ranked cultivators and the inner rank tournament for those. Beyond, Rong Ming and Rong Xing were both considered two geniuses from this year's new students, and Rong Ming was very proud while telling Wei Yu about these things. School does not sound like such a bad idea. Wei Yu could not help but think, though he quickly scrapped his thoughts as he remembered how easy he would be noticed. At school, you have no reason to hide your cultivation base, and when you reach the disciple level, I should be able to mask myself easily. Lan Feng said calmly, Well I will be able to mask myself against human cultivators, but if there are any strong beasts around, they will definitely notice our aura. Wei Yu nodded solemnly. It would be a great risk, but right now, it was not a decision he needed to make. He was after all only five years old, and a lot of things could happen within these five years. The following day Wei Yu was not surprised when he saw Rong Ming finding him at yet another hillside, and this time he was taught about the different countries. Currently, they were living within the Taiyang Kingdom, which was ruled by the Taiyang royal family. There were seven big cities within this kingdom, but Taiyang City was the capital and obviously the biggest of them all. The continent had another three kingdoms apart from the Taiyang Kingdom, the Saiban Empire, the Yuliang Province, and Shenyuan. Three of these kingdoms worked together as allies, however, Shenyuan had been closed to the outside world for thousands of years and any who dared enter were never heard from again. Both Wei Yu and Lan Feng listened to everything with great interest. I bet, Wei Yu began. That the guy we are looking for is within Shenyuan. Lan Feng could not help but laugh. It would indeed make sense if their target hid within a country riddled with fear and murder. The days went by one after another, and Rong Ming came to find Wei Yu every day. It annoyed Wei Yu that he had lost almost a month's worth of cultivating, however, he would much rather keep the young boy company than have to constantly be on guard against Rong Liang. The esteemed lord had not tried to get close to Wei Yu since his son started visiting the hills every day. Finally, the day arrived where Lord Rong Liang broke up the camp and moved his entourage towards the magical forest. I promise that I will return for you, Rong Ming said with a serious voice while holding Wei Yu's hands within his own. Wei Yu had gotten used to the way Rong Ming looked at him, and he pitied the young lord. Wei Yu was convinced that Rong Ming was lonely and lacked friends, which was why he had become so friendly with the younger white-haired boy. Lan Feng was not able to stop laughing for hours, however, 
He refused to tell Wei Yu why he was laughing. He claimed that Wei Yu was incredibly dim-witted, but that even he would notice one day. End of chapter. Chapter 5. You're a boy. The village returned to usual as soon as Lord Rong Liang led his entourage away. Although the villagers were proud of the fact that someone as important as Lord Rong Liang had visited them, they also knew that they were in no condition to entertain him or waste time on celebrating as they had their chores they needed to do to fill their stomachs and ensure their livelihood. While most villagers missed the excitement of the visitors, Wei Yu could not help but feel happy when things returned to normal. The last month had been the first break the pair had taken from cultivation, but Wei Yu did not enjoy the forced break. He was filled with excitement upon remembering Lan Feng's promise about teaching him a martial arts skill, and this morning he hurried to pick up the goats even earlier than usual. Upon reaching a fairly close hillside, Wei Yu sat down impatiently and waited for Lan Feng to understand his hint. He wanted to be able to use the qi he had painstakingly gathered over these last few years. Do you even know what a martial arts skill is? Lan Feng asked slightly overbearingly as he disliked it whenever anyone tried to rush him. I expect you to explain it to me, Wei Yu said with the sweetest smile on his face and a naivety in his eyes that made Lan Feng snort with disdain. I'll explain. But only because I need you to be strong. Lan Feng said arrogantly. Don't think I will fall for your stupid acting. Wei Yu had nothing to say in return as Lan Feng was as usual correct, and in the end he would gain the knowledge needed. Martial arts skills are ranked the same as cultivators. That is to say, student, disciple, practitioner, and so on. Each rank is split into low, medium and high level. Wei Yu nodded as it made sense. The cultivation base of a martial arts skill has nothing to do with what rank you are at. It is only to rank the potential strength of the skill. Martial arts skills have no actual rank restrictions they all depend on how much qi you can use and the ability will grow together with your rank until the day you reach the rank of the skill. Let us say that you have a king ranked martial arts skill. This skill will grow together with you until the day you are a king-ranked expert. By this time it will be unable to advance further. Lan Feng explained, once again incredibly overbearing. Wei Yu was slightly annoyed by his tone, but he had no intention to comment as he knew Lan Feng would start a discussion rather than continuing on with the martial arts explanation. That being said there are quite a lot of the higher ranked skills that you can't use before you reach a certain rank since you don't have sufficient qi to activate them. Hearing his explanation made a lot of sense to Wei Yu, and he nodded again with great interest. Also, although I told you the ranks of martial skills, it is not like you can find any ranked skill just like that. When creating a martial arts skill, you cannot make a skill above your rank. When cultivators open the middle and upper dantians, they no longer need to spend a lot of time on martial arts skills since they get spirit power and Wu Wei. Hearing this made Wei Yu grumble slightly as he was getting quite a depressing premonition. Therefore you will have a lot of student, disciple and practitioner level martial arts skills. You will also find a decent amount of master ranked skills as they are still trying to create spirit energy, but grandmaster and duke ranked martial skills are quite rare. King, emperor, and saint level martial arts skills are as rare as a phoenix's tear. At least they were back when I lived here. I have never even heard about God-ranked martial arts skills. Are you telling me this because you are going to give me some useless martial arts skill? Wei Yu worriedly asked, but he was met with indignation. Did I ever give you anything useless? Lan Feng retorted feeling insulted. Wei Yu had to admit that Lan Feng was doing his utmost to ensure that he would become strong. I am going to give you a movement martial arts skill. Lan Feng said with determined satisfaction, however, Wei Yu could not help but feel slightly disappointed. A movement martial art. He asked downcast. What use is that? You really are stupid, Lan Feng answered impatiently. First, you need a movement martial art skill to be able to run away. Even if you do know any fighting skills, your cultivation base is simply too low. It is better to teach you how to run away so that you can stay alive. I don't care about honor or dignity. All we need is to stay alive until we reach our goals, and this skill is needed for you and me live. Although Wei Yu had been slightly depressed, he could not help but acknowledge what Lan Feng said. A movement martial arts skill also has other uses. Lan Feng continued, he did after all want to prove his extensive knowledge to the younger Wei Yu. You can use a movement martial arts skill to speed up your attacks or defense. 
Also when you have managed to perfect it, you will be able to leave behind a mirage while moving or even create an optical illusion causing your opponent to waste energy attacking nothing. Lan Feng sounded fairly smug, and Wei Yu understood why. The movement skill was definitely much better than what he had at first expected. What rank is it? Wei Yu asked curiously. It would be quite good if it were a master ranked skill. It is a high king ranked skill. Lan Feng said indifferently causing Wei Yu to doubt his hearing. High king rank. Didn't you just say that those were incredibly rare? He asked shocked, and his reaction clearly pleased Lan Feng. I would not be this confident in myself if I did not at least have a vast amount of high ranked skills. Lan Feng said with a self satisfied voice. Wei Yu was quite relieved knowing that he had a library of skills for when he should need it. However, Lan Feng continued, as he understood what Wei Yu was thinking. I have no intention of giving you any more skills no matter how easy they are until you have perfected this one. Lan Feng was as stern with his martial art skills as he was with Qi refining. Although Wei Yu was tempted to ask for more, he managed to hold back as he fully understood Lan Feng's decision. Lan Feng ordered Wei Yu to sit down in a meditation position and slowly guide his consciousness into his dantian where the phoenix was waiting for him. Lan Feng then ordered the adult consciousness of Wei Yu into yet another meditation position where he was ordered to put his hands together forming the bird seal and then he closed his eyes. Lan Feng moved slowly as he lifted his finger towards his own forehead and pressed it between his eyes where his upper dantian was located. A sharp ice blue light instantly lit up the entire dantian cave. Lan Feng extended his index finger, and a small pearl appeared at the tip, which quickly sucked in the shining blue light. Lan Feng quietly observed the pearl sucking in the light, and gave a satisfied nod as the final speck of light disappeared. He looked at the pearl in his hand which had gone from transparent to a lustrous ice blue. Lan Feng moved towards the meditating Wei Yu and pressed the blue pearl against his forehead. The pearl slipped into Wei Yu's head and illuminated his consciousness with knowledge from within. The unnatural light that was breaking out from within Wei Yu was the only thing that indicated something different was happening instead of his usual qi refining. Lan Feng was exhausted upon retracting the martial art from within and slumped down against the cave wall while observing his focused friend. The blue phoenix could not help but feel a slight bit of relief upon looking at his hard-working student. Wei Yu did not have any incredible talent when it came to cultivating, nor did he have pills or elixirs to help speed up the process but he did have an unwavering determination, and he had been continuing refining for year after year to ensure that the quality of his qi was as good as possible. Lan Feng would never admit it, but even he would have given up the painstakingly slow cultivating that they were doing so he could not help but have a strange feeling of gratefulness towards Wei Yu. While Lan Feng was exhaustedly inspecting his feelings, Wei Yu was swallowed by a sea of information. As soon as the pearl entered his head, it dissolved into rays of light that spread throughout his body which taught Wei Yu the martial art skill known as Velocity Flow. To perfect a martial art skill, the cultivator would have to practice it unceasingly. The information he was given was which routes to direct his qi to flow through his meridians to power the skill, and it also included the two seals he would need to form within his lower dantian. The rays of light shot through his meridians show Wei Yu examples of where and how to apply his qi and he quickly remembered the paths, combinations, and different seals needed to practice the martial arts skill. Although it was only one skill, it had many uses. Each usage had its own unique qi flow, and to be able to perform the individual abilities each and every one of them needed practice. Slowly the light disappeared, and Wei Yu opened his blue eyes which were glistening with excitement as he thought about this new knowledge. He could not wait to try it out, and he returned to controlling his body rather than his consciousness. Wei Yu remembered every combination, and quickly lead his qi towards his legs. He allowed it to flow through the paths he had learned, but his brows quickly furrowed as he felt that something was wrong. Although he felt as if he had gained some speed, it was definitely far inferior to what it should have been. Not only that, his new speed was very uneven and impossible to control. Wei Yu frowned at first, but his frown quickly turned into a brilliant smile because he knew what the skill would be capable of doing upon perfection. All he needed to do was practice the skill, and practicing and training were definitely something that Wei Yu did not fear. After learning the martial arts skill, Wei Yu had to change his schedule slightly. Prior to this, he would spend his whole day cultivating, however, now it was obvious that he needed time to practice his martial arts skill 
so he ended up spending the morning and early noon practicing and the afternoon and evening were spent on refining qi. Another year passed while Wei Yu followed this schedule. He worked harder than before but also felt a great sense of happiness every time he gained more qi or when his control over velocity flow improved. On this day, which was like any other, Wei Yu was guarding the goats on the hillside while training velocity flow. Lan Feng had allowed his consciousness to leave the safety of Wei Yu's body as there was no danger around and a smile suddenly appeared on his face as he looked towards the village. Wei Yu, he called with an excited voice. There is a pleasant surprise waiting for you when we return home tonight. Although Lan Feng had allowed his consciousness to roam around on the grassy fields, their conversation was still held within their minds. Wei Yu looked at Lan Feng with a quizzical expression on his face, but he did not ask any questions. Even something as simple as a new dish created by his mother was enough to excite Lan Feng. Sharing a body with Wei Yu had its benefits. Lan Feng naturally felt everything that Wei Yu felt, however, he had no way of taking over the body so he could only sit back and enjoy the experiences. Wei Yu smiled at the phoenix who had changed slightly over the years. Back when they first met, Wei Yu was sure that Lan Feng was the haughtiest creature in the world, however, after years of conversations, it was easier to look at Lan Feng as a spoiled boy with an extensive amount of power and knowledge on odd subjects. Lan Feng would still act arrogant from time to time, however, he was easy to coax into a good mood and friendly behavior. Especially since Wei Yu started practicing his martial arts skill and would make use of it to hunt down critters in the forest and bring them home for dinner. Lan Feng was definitely a beast, and the easiest way to tame a beast was to feed it. Wei Yu could not help but smirk while thinking back on the way he usually convinced Lan Feng to behave. Wei Yu decided it was time to return to the village and have a look at the great surprise that was waiting for him. So he hoisted two birds and a hare he caught onto his shoulder while gathering the goats and moved down the hillside towards the village. However, just before Wei Yu entered the village, he noticed something out of the ordinary. There were a large number of tents erected on an empty lot next to the village. The tents looked uncomfortably similar to those that had been there a year before. Lan Feng, Wei Yu mumbled while having a premonition that someone would be waiting for him. You don't think Rong Ming was serious when he said that he would return for me? He asked in a worried voice, but the only answer he got was stifled laughter. Wei Yu could not help but let out a sigh before he slipped into a personality that would fit a six-year-old child who saw visitors in their quiet town. Wei Yu. A voice called out, and with an internal sigh, Wei Yu turned towards the voice with a shocked and excited expression on his face. Young master. He said, with a beaming smile on his face. I did not expect to see you here. He continued, but what he actually wanted to say was something along the lines of, please do not take another month away from my cultivation. I am already far behind as it is. However, Rong Ming quickly took Wei Yu's hand in his, after he safely returned the goats to their pen. He dragged the white-haired boy towards their campsite. Walking closer and closer to the campsite, Wei Yu felt a surge of uneasiness arise within. He was currently still just a second star student, however, reaching the second star at six years of age was quite a feat. Both Wei Yu and Lan Feng knew that they would not be able to hide their cultivation base from Rong Ming's father, and there was even a chance that they would be unable to hide the presence of Lan Feng. Fortunately enough, Rong Ming did not bring Wei Yu to meet his father, instead, he brought him to meet his sister. Rong Xing was a beautiful young girl with a gentle temper. She quickly greeted Wei Yu but apart from that she just sat there with a smile on her face while Rong Ming talked. He was telling Wei Yu about the past year, I really did miss you a lot. Rong Ming said multiple times during the conversation, Oh, and we are doing very good at the academy. We are here this time for real practice you see. Do you want to cultivate too? Rong Ming spent the following month once again following Wei Yu around. He would teach Wei Yu different cultivation methods and promised that he would definitely take Wei Yu with him to the academy when he turned 10 years old. Wei Yu could only sigh, but deep inside, it was impossible for him to hate the boy because his feelings were genuine. As to why Wei Yu received these feelings was a mystery to Wei Yu, although Lan Feng claimed to know but refused to say. After yet another farewell, Wei Yu guessed that Rong Ming would return to the village next year, but he did not have any intention of wasting time worrying about that now. Instead, he returned to his usual schedule of cultivating and practicing his martial arts skills. 
I don't understand, Wei Yu complained slightly. It had been almost a year since Rong Ming and his entourage had camped at the village last time, and Wei Yu was now a seven-year-old child. He was still as breathtakingly beautiful as ever, and his figure was depressingly short. I am definitely using velocity flow perfectly, but even when I execute it right, my fists are still not able to deal a great amount of damage. Actually, often I am the one who ends up injured. Wei Yu continued while rubbing his head, wondering where he was going wrong. Lan Feng snorted, which usually happened whenever Wei Yu said something incredibly stupid. It is a high king ranked movement skill. It's a movement skill dumbass. He said with a sigh. It allows you to move your body with great speed and accuracy, but it is your body it moves. It's not the skill's fault you are weak. Wei Yu could only grumble in reply to his answer. What Lan Feng said made perfect sense, and he should have understood it himself without needing Lan Feng's explanation. Wei Yu could not help but feel grateful that he had Lan Feng to explain things to him. There were so many things that Wei Yu had a hard time understanding, even now, seven years after entering this new world. Wei Yu had now reached the third star and had perfected the movement aspect of velocity flow. He was capable of producing a mirror image at his previous location, and he was currently practicing the final aspect of this high-ranked skill called optical illusion. Wei Yu did not have sufficient qi to create more than one optical illusion, but upon perfecting just the skill, it would automatically increase later on when his qi increased. Oh, Lan Feng said smilingly. Your friends are arriving early this year. Wei Yu had expected that Rong Ming would appear fairly soon, so he was not terribly shocked upon hearing the information. Instead, he was slightly surprised to find himself not hating the idea of having a friend to talk with. Although there were many children in the village, none of them could be considered a friend as all of them had their own chores to do throughout the day, and that was far away from Wei Yu's hillsides. Wei Yu gathered the goats and led them back to the village. He wondered what had happened during the last year, but when he reached the village, he noticed that things seemed slightly different from the previous years. Firstly, Lord Rong Liang was not present, and although this did calm Wei Yu down slightly, he could not help but worry about why this would be. Are you Wei Yu? A voice suddenly rang from behind him. Wei Yu swiftly spun around, and in front of him was a burly man with a kind face. He was wearing the uniform of a Rilo city guard and did not have any feeling of danger around him. Wei Yu nodded. Please follow me. The young master has requested that you be brought to him as soon as you returned. He explained and politely led the way towards the tent in the center of the camp. Wei Yu was greatly surprised to see where he was taken, but he dared not say anything. Lan Feng too was incredibly silent as he hid away in the Qi cave hoping to not be noticed by any of the exceptional experts that were present in the camp. Wei Yu. A familiar voice rang out the moment the young boy stepped into the tent, and Wei Yu looked at Rong Ming with confused eyes. Rong Ming was now 12 years old. He was sitting behind a desk in the middle of a tent and had an elderly man next to him. They seemed to be discussing something about the magical forest. A map was spread out across the desk and multiple flags were placed randomly on top of it. I am sorry that I could not come pick you up this time, he said apologetically. While he spoke, Wei Yu noticed that the middle-aged man at his side was clearly measuring Wei Yu. Slight fear crept into Wei Yu's heart as this man was definitely no weaker than Lord Rong Liang. However, the man quickly retracted his gaze and returned to look at the many different paper scrolls on the table. This caused Wei Yu to breathe a sigh of relief. I am in control of this year's beast hunt. Rong Ming explained proudly. Father had some things that he needed to deal with in town and decided it was time for me to learn something about managing a party of soldiers. This is Bi Yu Huang. He is father's counselor, and he is assisting me on this trip. Rong Ming explained while making a gesture towards the middle-aged man. Wei Yu quickly clasped his hands together and bowed deeply before saying in a fearful voice, Wei Yu greets Lord Counselor. His actions seemed to cause some approval from Bi Yu Wang's, and he nodded in reply. But, Rong Ming continued, this time with a slightly depressed expression on his face, I have a lot of things that I need to do. Because of this, I won't be able to entertain you that much this month. Wei Yu nodded before answering. This lowly one is nothing more than a poor child. Young master should focus on his responsibilities. The look of approval within Bi Yu Wang's eyes grew stronger, and Rong Ming himself sent Wei Yu a sad smile before nodding. At least have dinner with us. 
Rong Ming exclaimed suddenly, and Bi Yu Huang nodded. Wei Yu had no choice but to agree, and a feast was served for the three of them. Rong Ming was speaking constantly during the meal. He spoke about the past year and how he had reached the second star of the disciple rank. Rong Xing had just reached the third star, but she had quite an incredible innate talent for cultivating. Wei Yu sensed he felt no jealousy towards his sister, rather Rong Ming was proud of the latter's talent. Wei Yu did enjoy the evening and the food. He enjoyed it even more so when he realized that Rong Ming would be incapable of interrupting his training for the next month. After saying his goodbyes, he happily headed towards a small lake at the edge of the forest. It was summer, and the heat was both hot and humid. Wei Yu had been training all day, and although it was late, he really wanted to take a bath before going home. The still water was chilled, and every drop caused Wei Yu to feel refreshed when he washed the old sweat and dirt off his skin. His long, white hair glistened in the moonlight and his blue eyes shone with contentment. Wei Yu was as stunning as an immortal fairy. Someone is observing you. Lan Feng quietly commented, and Wei Yu turned to look towards the forest at whoever it was. At first, he had been worried, but upon noticing the person, a smile appeared on his face. Lady Rongxing, he said with his childish voice that bubbled with happiness. He quickly stepped out of the water and walked towards his clothes and saw clearly a shocked expression appear on Rong Xing's adorable face. Is there anything wrong? He asked confused. Perhaps she had noticed something. He thought while being slightly scared. You're... you're a boy. She asked while her usually perfectly white skin had turned fiery crimson from embarrassment. Wei Yu looked at her with a puzzled expression on his face, which caused Rong. Xing to become even more shocked. Of course. He answered confused. Why would someone have to explain their gender? However, after thinking about it, he always said Wei Yu and never talked about his gender. Lan Feng, he spoke with a dreadful voice. Don't tell me that Rong Ming thinks I'm a girl. Before Lan Feng had the chance to answer exuberant laughter suddenly rang out from within the trees. Wei Yu looked at Rong Xing who was laughing so much that tears were streaming down her cheeks. This is perfect, she giggled while trying to contain her laughter. I'll come visit you tomorrow when you're at the hills. Rong Xing laughed while she turned around and returned to the campsite leaving Wei Yu and Lan Feng behind. That Rong family is really quite messed up. Lan Feng finally said before the two of them returned home. Rong Xing walked into the central tent and saw that Rong Ming and Bi Yu Huang were discussing the list of magical beast cores they were expected to procure on this trip before she giggled slightly. Her laughter made Rong Ming look at her. Where have you been? He asked curiously as Rong Xing rarely left the campsite whenever they were here. I met with Wei Yu. She answered with a voice brimming with happiness. Rong Ming's face suddenly changed, and he grinned towards his twin sister. Do you like Wei Yu? He asked with a slightly nervous voice, as his eyes were fixed on Rong Xing's face. A feeling of relief flooded Rong Ming when he saw his sister nodding. Wei Yu is definitely an interesting person. She said as her eyes shone with a light that was hard to explain. What would you think if she became your sister-in-law? Rong Ming asked seriously, but his expression quickly changed into a frown as his usually quiet sister started laughing uncontrollably. Although it was very out of character, it was still pleasant to the ear, and it was hard for him to stay mad at her. Oh my dear brother, Rong Xing said with a big smile on her face. I would definitely love for that to happen, however, I do not think that it is very likely. Rong Ming furrowed his brows upon hearing her reply, but he was a stubborn young boy. We will see, was his answer before he once again returned to figuring out where the magical beasts they needed to slay would probably be located. End of chapter. For more light novel audibles like this, please hit like and subscribe.